demonstration as soon as we've launched our kit, and you know what that means. It's inspiration time! Welcome back to the Design and Inspiration Show. Um, we are going to bring you quite an incredible kit, really, because we've got a strand of gemstones here that I don't think I've ever seen before, although I'm sure it'll be corrected in a second, but these must be new. I've, got, I've never seen them. Little doves. <laughs> and we're not just giving you one strand of little shell doves, we're giving you two strands of shell doves. Clearly, you never have enough doves. You, they don't have to be doves, I suppose. Could be a partridge amongst the pigeons. Ah, oh, they should have. They missed the trick. A crow amongst the doves. Oh. <laughs> That was fails. <laughs> Not taking the blame for that. So you get two strands <laughs> of your white shell doves. These are gorgeous, aren't they? I love the way the nacre on the shells is actually giving you this beautiful play of light. Almost, well, very, very similar to pearlescence, really, isn't mm. it? Uh, if you're going to have a dove in any gemstone, it's got to be shell, hasn't it? Because yeah. it looks so ethereal and so peaceful yeah so and that's what they stand for isn't doves it doves have so many different kind of connotations in different cultures don't they like yeah, peace they and love and freedom those kind yeah. of all the more positive yeah kind of philosophical yeah. views i suppose which is good it's good for me at the moment Gemma. is that yeah I'm embracing <laughs> ideas of love and connectivity oh doing a lot of meditation are you yeah i like a dove Two strands of cultured pearls. I'm being serious. <laughs> I don't know if everyone's laughing at me. It's good. I did. I did a lot of meditation. Yeah. Free mind. Used to. Too busy now. <laughs> too, too busy to meditate. I know. It's. I know. It's um, when I should meditate. That's an oxymoron, surely. Yeah. This is quite interesting because I love the idea of combining the shell with organic pearls, of course, because mm. you get a very similar effect from the pearl lessons. It's got that organic quality. It's got that connection with Mother Nature, if you like. Actually, you can imagine. I mean, these pearls are perfect for bridal commissions, to be quite honest with you. They're gorgeous, aren't they? It's a very bridal set of gems. You know, it would work. Classic kind of ivory white pearls, aren't they? Mm. Four by five millimetres here on the more delicate size. Six to seven millimetres on these uh, slightly larger pearls. So perfect here. And I love this combination with... Moss green agate cabochons. These have never been seen before. Brand new to us today as part of this kit. Love that combination. It's like being um, kind of like a mountain range, isn't it? Yeah. The combination of the moss greens and the whites. Yeah, it is. And I, I thought I think I took my inspiration that when you get those, you think you get inspiration of um, creating foliage and things like that. So it sort of helps the process as well to have something so interesting. A couple of weeks ago I went to the Lake District and I went sort of hill walking and I walked to the top of, I'll call it a mountain, it's like a hill. <laughs> but because of the time of year, it was snowing when I got to the top. Was it? Yeah, and it was amazing. Oh. I took a few pictures, people were loving them on Facebook actually. Gorgeous up there. I went in winter, I went for Christmas one year, it was beautiful. It's amazing, isn't it? Mm. I feel like crying when I drive away from the Lake District. I, do you know what? I cry every time I arrive. It's like I'm coming home. It's lovely. Ah. I do. I have a little tear. <laughs> I cry when I leave because I know I'm <laughs> coming back to work. Yeah. Although, I do get to work with gemstones, so that's quite good. Uh, so we've got um, a huge carrot weight on the cabochons. We saw this uh, in yesterday's kits, actually, didn't we? And uh, also, on Friday's kit, we had some fantastic cabochons with uh, Laura Binding's designs. When you see the cabochons start dialing the free phone number, it means the kit's going to be popular, basically. <laughs> cabochons, again, fit into so many different disciplines, much like we're talking about with the seed beads. And, of course, cabochons tend to be associated with the same disciplines, like your soutache, or your wire work, or your macrame, or kumihimo settings. The mm. cabochons are going to work. You've got 675 carats of the moss agate pendants. Oh. 
love this. Look at this. Slight irregularities to the shapes just gives you, again, that slightly different dynamic to your designs, I suppose. Yeah, it does. And it, again, it informs your design your design process so you take inspiration from the shape or the or the color or the inclusions yeah i mean that it's gorgeous like a little fern leaf isn't, mm. it, isn't it and then you've got that rich forest green color it looks almost jet black but i mean that's almost like a, a sharp tooth and if you could find a setting for that just on a piece of leather cord i'd wear that yeah hasn't got a drill hole there so you need to come up, oh, I suppose you could get a little bit of wire yeah or you could dremel a, dremel a hole if you've got dremel your dremel it. yeah I love that Dremel advert. Yeah, it's pretty oh, obsessed with it. <laughs> Just needs, like, Roger Federer standing behind it, doesn't it? <laughs> Dremel, the best a man can get. <laughs> 675 carats on your cat. Oh, that's another pretty interesting one. Again, that's like having that kind of aerial view of a mountain range, isn't it? Yeah. I love that. That's gorgeous. Oh, listen to this, very poetic from director Tom. He said, oh, it's like a, a glacier amongst the mountain range. There you mm. go, he likes that. See he's seen inspiring. a few glaciers in his time, you know, he said. <laughs> he's, a bit, he's a bit of a jet setter, Tom. He's travelled the world. He's always off to Peru and mm, these... He's jealous. Yeah, Paddington Bear sent him back there. <laughs> get out of my woods. Um, now, that's not all you get. You also get your copper wires. 10 metres of each, you've got 1 mil, 0.6 mil, and 0.4 mil. Three perfect gauges, really, for doing all the work you need. You've got your structural, your sort of uh, weaving, mm -hmm. cord, and then your detailing as well. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Perfect. Whoa! People are multi buying this kit, left, right, and centre, at this price of 48.60. Savvy buyers. It's That's probably because so many people missed out on our kits yesterday as well, Joe. Yeah, and it's, and it's worth that. Anyway, it's worth for 48.60 is so much. Well, 675 it. carats of the cabochons. Yeah. 30 metres of the wire. We've just taken it down to 36.95. Who knows when we'll have the little dove back in stock. And you're getting two strands in this kit. That yeah. was a good planning. Yeah, and one, one strand is a stash for Christmas because doves are everywhere at Christmas. It's great on cards, on your Christmas tree. You know, I know we don't want to talk about it this time of year, but you've got two strands. I put, I put one away and then one to use in the designs that we're going to do today. That's not a bad idea, though, actually. And I do find that if you spread the cost of Christmas, then it's mm. not that kind of... It doesn't have that same depressing impact no. when you get into, like, the third week of January and you're like... How many, how long is this month? <laughs> there are so many doves on this. Hold on, one, two, three, four, five, nine, ten, seven, twenty, twenty, one, two, 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 three, two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, thirty, three, thirty, three. So over thirty doves on both strands. Mm -hmm. So well, roughly thirty. It's a guesstimation, of course, but. All I can say about this kit is it's absolutely flying out the door. Where's that tumbleweed when you need it? <laughs> Never mind. 36.95 should be 48.60. There's actually groans of discer discerning groans coming from the gallery. Come on, that's a brilliant joke. Unbelievable. There's no need for this, boys. Come on, get with the programme here. I can't believe Phil gives me such harsh critiques on my jokes, given his bundle names. Yeah, they do leave a lot to be desired sometimes, don't they? <laughs> Inspector Quartz. <laughs> that was a <laughs> Magnesite PI. Oh dear. <laughs> What's the other? What's it? The... Oh yeah. Wait for it. It's coming up on Wednesday, isn't it? The pre the pre night bundle. Before it gets dark. <laughs> That actually got a little snigger out of Gemma. I think you, that one landed, I reckon. I quite like that one, yeah. This is the man who told <laughs> me that my Moo Kite joke's not good enough. Okay, should be 48.60. You've taken all of that down to 36.95. And now we're going to go and see what Gemma's been creating with this book. <sighs> did you find it pretty inspirational? Oh, absolutely, yeah. It was one of those things. It did immediately inform the design I wanted to do. I wanted to do. Right, okay, so... 
the actual combination of the products actually led you through yeah. a kind of yeah I wanted theme. to make yeah I wanted yeah. to make something that looked like foliage and um, sort of reminded me of spring and things like that so that's what I did so did you help to inform the, the strategy of putting this kit together or was this no. what yeah no this is just what you received for yeah. for the kit and it, it yeah. was in keeping with what you wanted to do they, yeah. wow sorry I saw this earlier but now that I've just seen it you know I've just I've just noticed even more detail. Like every time I look, I see something else. Yeah. I didn't see these little flowers before. I saw that one. I saw the doves. So, look at those little flowers. There's, there's so much detail to this piece. Yeah, it, I mean, it was lovely. I had a pack of the, I can't remember what they're called, the Tim Holtz oh, yeah, um, foliage pack show. that's coming up later. Yeah. So I had those to use amongst my two um, designer inspirations that's today. It. And they just fitted so well in here, you know, that they had not only helped bulk the design, they also add interest and a little more texture. So yeah, I love this. I actually love this bundle. I don't think I've ever seen so many people multi-buying a designer inspiration kit. Wow. I mean, granted, I've only been here for a week and a half, but still, in that week and a half, yeah. so many people grabbing two it's, of this kit. It's worth multi-buying. I think just for those devs, they're so niche, and yeah. you know, there's no, not everybody's going to have those, so you're going to stand out. Set you apart from other designers. Yeah. Got you. Yeah. So that's that's a good thing to have four strands of, I suppose. Mm. Then yeah. there you go. Um, how many of this kit do we have in stock? Oh, okay. So we had uh, roughly a hundred, but how many have we got remaining? Sorry. Okay, so we've got around about forty left in stock. But we've got more than 20 people in their baskets. Mm. So I'm thinking it's going to be a sellout. Yeah, in fact, Deborah Bananas. from Pennsylvania has texted in and says, Stunning design, Gemma. Absolutely love it. Slash them. <laughs> Thank you. Deborah. Deborah. How gutted are we? But <laughs> Sissy from Texas isn't your old next door neighbour. <laughs> uh, Karen's texted in as well and said, That's awesome, Gemma. You're amazing. Oh, thanks That's what very you much. like to hear on a <laughs> Sunday afternoon, isn't it? Okay. You're, you're amazing. <laughs> But you haven't had a limerick yet, so. No. <laughs> uh, Tina has also texted in to say, Good afternoon, Ed, Gemma and crew. I hope you're all well. Could we please see Gemma's pendant hugs, Tina? Is this the one you're wearing, I believe? Oh, I must, yeah. Very impressive. Ah, it's a celtic -y, Viking-y inspired. Yes. It's yeah. gorgeous. What's that, like, hematite donut or something? Yeah, is it? it is, yeah. It's indeed. Dog. There's some <laughs> gemstone classification there. I'm doing my GIA qualification soon, so then I'll, oh, be, yeah. then I'll be really on it. Uh, Martin B is also texting in. Say, Ed, can you shout at the camera, wake up Laura, as she fell asleep watching JM? Thanks. Do you know what, I though? I'll get in trouble from the director and all the rest of the audience if I shout. Mm. I'll be like, oh, yeah, good man. Okay. Laura, wake up! I've just really freaked somebody out yeah, in there. Really that's good. Like all the Lauras it's around the country. To me. <laughs> I can see you, Laura. Concentrate. Unbelievable. Okay. Um, so have we see. Have we had a look at all of these designs? Because they're all equally beautiful. Oh wow, that is gorgeous. It looks like um, this whole thing looks like it could be sort of. Garden of Eden inspired. Well, that's it, and that's what it, that's what it does. The connotations of the doves and then the dendrites. All well, I thought it was a dendrite opal. Actually, that's oh, what I thought right. it was. Okay. Um, but all the fern-like inclusions. Right, actually, because the moss eh, it does have almost foliage-like inclusions, yeah, it doesn't does, it? Yeah, yeah, I can see yeah. where you're coming from there. So that's what it was. It was Garden of Eden. I mean, I think if that piece had a name, that would be what it what it would be. That sissy from Texas has now texted in uh, to say, love your work, Gemma. Your patina DVD was fab. Oh, thanks, love the work sissy. I see on the show right now. Need DVD on this work. There you go. Just, yeah. We'll just keep that to one side at the end. And, <laughs> just but I'm going to show pitch. you how to do the big piece. So that's... Oh, there you go. I, I thought I'd have a go at attempting some... Um, a, just a to let you know, if you're thinking, patina DVD? I wasn't tuned in that day, I missed out on that deal. It's coming up <laughs> this afternoon before 5 pm. You will have the opportunity to add the Patina DVD to your order, just 4 95 as with all of our DVDs. Um, so, this is the kind of showcase boutique style piece that we're going to yes. demonstrate. Yeah. It looks quite um, kind of high intensity. 
it piece, is. if you like. You it's know a what bit I mean? like a jigsaw. Yeah. So you you know you start on the outside and then you work in, and it builds up slowly. And it's the great thing about it is it's one that you can have sort of on your worktop, and you can come back to and do it in stages. So you don't have to be intimidated to do it all at once, um, which is you know really nice. And then. Is therapeutic. Does that mean that you could actually sort of plan it out and just do one section one day and yeah. then just, just, ah, that's quite yeah. good actually because yeah. lots of people are very busy, aren't they? Yeah, that's it. And, and it's nice. It's nice to have as a filler project. I always like to have something ongoing. For me, it's usually chain mail. So I've got something ongoing that I dip into in between projects. I love, I love a bit of chain mail. Yes, and me. But, I'm, yeah. I'm a bit addicted at the moment. Yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> Although I didn't get my Valentine's piece done in time. Oh. And that got me in a world of trouble. Oh well. Thirty-six ninety-five is the price for the kit. Uh, I will say that now we actually have fewer than twenty remaining in stock, and we've uh, still got over ten people in their baskets. So uh, if everyone was to check out, we'd actually have single figures of availability. Gemma's got a limerick now. I've got nothing. Oh, yes. uh, it's a <laughs> there is a lady called Gemma who, at jewellery, is incredibly clever. Her designs are sublime, and one of them is mine. There is a lady called Gemma. I love it. I Shout. love it too. Thank you, Michelle. Amazing. I don't feel so left out now. Left out? You've been called amazing <laughs> already. Okay, uh, let's crack on then. Okay. Where do we start with this? Right, demo? so we're going to start by making the frame for, for the piece because we need something nice and secure. It's, there's a lot of gemstones on there, so it's got to be a nice um, broad base for everything to sit into. So we're going to use um, this bare copper wire, and I've got three lengths of the one mil here. And we want them staggered in size because we're going to make sort of a half moon um, or a crescent moon shape with, and twist it either side. Okay. So what I've done is I've cut my first length about 80 centimetres and then each subsequent length about 7 centimetres shorter from each one. So we've got three varying lengths. Okay. This beginning bit seems really crude. It's really crudely done, but it all comes into, um, into shape in the end. So I want to twist these three wires together at one end. So get the ends all married up <coughs> at one end. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just <coughs> make a very loose loop over my finger there so that I've got something to grip onto to twist. And I'm going to take my thumb and finger, if you want to, you can use pliers to, to hold the wires, sort of around um, 15 centimetres along from the end. And I'm going to twist the wires. Now, um, I'm doing it by hand, as I don't want to over twist it, I just want to combine them really. And because this is such lovely soft bare copper wire, um, it twists really easily. It's not like twisting our coated wires in a one mill together, it's much, much softer. Okay, so once I'm happy that I've got them all twisted, I'll release that loop there and pull that back out. And then come along and have a look at your wires and get them spaced out nice and evenly. So if I just space these, part them, and this is going to be the area that's going to create the framework to hold all of our cabochons onto. So you can see that here, and I want to create sort of a half moon shape. So just arrange them so that they sit alongside one another. So I'm just smoothing them out with my fingers. Don't worry too much about them being lumpy and bumpy. It doesn't matter too much. And then get your rough roughly the size of your bib. Okay, so I'm thinking that's about right. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, actually, I've got the wrong one at the top. We want to make sure that, because can you see here, this is my shortest one. I've actually got it to the bottom, right. which is the longest. So I want to reposition that. In fact, that would be a good place to start. Position them so that they're in height, you know, in length order. So that they all sort of, bring that down, so they're all sort of similar length. Then um, make your three sort of half moon shapes. And when you're sort of happy ish with the frame that you've created, so I think that's about, about right. Then grip again in that area where you want the twisting to stop. Make a bend in this end and then twist around with your finger. You see, I've just got my finger in that loop and I'm just putting it round and round. Now, you do get grubby fingers when you're working with the bare copper because every, as it's out in the um, air, and the oxygen is affecting it and it's patinering itself. It's a natural process. So you will get black fingers, but don't worry, it does just rub off. 
it just rubs off your hands easily okay so there we go that's now twisted so we've now made our frame to sit everything in so whilst we're at this stage I may as well I'm going to make the clasp on the ends so we've got three wires um, to combine or to make into a clasp so what I generally do is um, one end I'll make a loop and one end I'll make a hook so I'm just going to split the wires I'm going to create a loop with this one um, length of wire and you can use um, a pen or a mandrel of some kind I've got bale, the bail making pliers which are perfect for this sort of thing so take I'm going to take those coming up in the show have we got well, these a, okay. a certain variety of them not the yeah. specific one we've got the six and eight mil oh right variety. yeah well perfect because this is probably about an eight mil this one so I'm making a loop here and I'm just going to wrap keep make that a wrap loop so I'm going to wrap this around a couple of times on that one wire and you can remove your pliers and trim off the excess and then if you just use your pliers just to squidge that together so that it's nice and neat and then take one wire at a time one wire at a time and wrap around and this is the same um, when you're finishing the twisted wires that we sell as well yeah. I always separate them and just use one wire at a time right okay oh, that's okay. a good tip isn't it yeah and then you haven't got two jagged ends and they, the ends are all in different places so it's not um, all so, bulky in yeah, one so, area yeah, so it gives you a, a more sort of balanced yeah. finish yeah, got yeah it. or graduated at least okay so I'm gonna wrap that one around into that little space and pull it in you can you this is one mil wire but it's so easy to manipulate with your fingers and I'm gonna trim that one as well and then any ends we can squish in and if we've got some ends sticking out after at the end you can always file them okay Another beauty of working with bare copper is that when you file it, it's the same colour inside as it is on the outside, so there's no, you know, you don't have to yeah. cover the ends or Makes anything. Makes sense, doesn't it? Um, okay. You've actually now um, gone into very limited availability on the kit. There is still some available, but based on the number of people who've got it in their basket, it looks like it's going to be a sellout deal. So if you do want to add it to your order, dial through as quickly as possible. If you've got it in your basket, then uh, I would definitely advise that you start checking out. Um, and on that note, we are going to make your Patina DVD Yay. available. Um, now, when this was launched, it was extremely popular. We've already had people text it in to say how informative and helpful it's been. Mm -hmm. um, quite a good DVD because it's very comprehensive, isn't it? We've got the introduction that takes you through the basics, and then you've got five of the different sort of techniques within the process yeah right? you've got the whole process start to finish it's right. really difficult to show it on the show yeah so sure. um, it's nice to have that broken down because I think there's a lot of fear around using chemicals and Definitely. things like that so to have it broken down so thoroughly and it helps you every step of the way so yeah it's, it's a good I wish I'd had it when I started doing the patina right. yeah. well I, I know for a fact that Gemma is fantastic at demonstrating these kind of uh, more um, intricate styles of jewelry making I suppose or, yeah. or more involved if you like so yeah. you know it will be a great grounding in it and Gemma's great at breaking it down step by step so there you go you got every single part of the process broken down for you there or for 4.95 I mean how much would you pay to go on a one day patina course and yet you've got an hour's worth tutorage yeah. the entire process start to finish you can stop pause rewind look at it as many times as you want you've got award-winning designer in your living room talking you through the process I haven't said congratulations thank yet. you so, yeah. there you go <laughs> uh, 4.95 for that DVD another add it to your order price make the most of your 1 PMP per day probably got about 80 people who have just grabbed the uh, the kit and uh, a further 15 people that are in their baskets so if you want to make the most of that 1 PMP per day the DVDs a must-have isn't it really yeah and it's you know perfect to use alongside this kit because every one of these, um, all the um, moss, agates. moss agates, can go into the patina. You could, you know, pop, submerge this piece in. Oh, you could submerge the whole yeah. piece before if you, you put the to. pearls in. You put the pearls in after oh. if you're going to do that. Yes, but pearls you know, very porous. But the, this copper is perfect for the patina. Gives you such a lovely effect. Good work. Okay, yeah. cool. Okay, so I'm Sorry, just going to make. That's fine. I'm just going to make the hook on this end. 
Um, so if I'm just going to trim it down, I want what's I would need a hook. I'm going to trim it to about twice the length I want the hook to end up as. Okay. Okay. So trim it off that's there. Right. That's about what's that? Six. Two, two inches. Two inches, six centimeters ish. Um, and then I'm going to turn a very small loop on one on this end, just to give me a smooth edge, really. So with the very tip of my pliers, turn a very small loop. Okay, and then in the opposite direction, take my um, bail making pliers again, um, or a pen, or anything that's the right shape, and I'm just going to twist this upwards and create a hook. So bring it back, double it back on itself, and you've got <coughs> like a, a crook shape there. Yeah, okay. And then again, these wires treat them separately, so take the, the top one first and wrap around a few times and when I finish the wires in a hook I finish on the inside of the hook because you know it's not going to um, scratch anyone or because it's on the inside of that design so it's nothing against the skin and then take the other wire and separately bring that one around too and that should sit into the little gaps that were created by the spirals that came before and again cut into that into the centre of that hook. So just in there. Pop that back up. And this just kind of shows the, uh, the evolution of the design, if you like. So you started to create the, the framework, if you like, yeah. and so just the natural flow of things is that you might as well create the clasp at that point. Yeah, you may as well. And also, it, it also gives it a little bit of stability when you're trying oh. to stitch into it because you have got it joined. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a functional it's purpose as well then, because it makes the design it. process a bit easier. That's it. I've got this one a bit lopsided, but at home, take your time and get it the right size each side. Okay. But then this can be the, f I mean, this can be the foundation for lots of different designs. Mm. But this is what we're doing today for this one. So I've got one here that I made earlier. Very blue Peter. I was very prepared today. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's so many stages to this. Um, I wanted to give you as much information about it as I could, which meant we had to do lots of prep. Okay, so here's one that I've got started, and you can see here I've got my cabochon stitched in. I've got four stitched in already, and I'm going to stitch my fifth one in, and that's the one I'm going to take you through right now. So a nice easy way of setting our cabochons. So I'll pop that over. You get so many shapes to choose from um, that you know yours will be different in sh in shape to, to this one or you know uh, makeup to this one. But I suppose you can at this point you can still manipulate the wires a little bit to widen or, or yeah. slightly yeah, narrow them depending on the, the cabochons you're working with. That's right. Simply. You've got plenty of plenty of scope e even within the shape that you've made to start with. Okay. Um, so um, to make the fat the um, cab claws then to hold the cabochons we do these separately so take my one mil wire and then pull it and soften it um, before you cut it off the reel in fact you, you needn't cut it off the reel at all you can um, snip it where you need it but if you don't like it um, flinging around then I'm going to cut it off so that I don't have to be careful where I am with it okay so start by making a small loop in one end, okay, and because put that there, and because um, these, we're not trying to necessarily make a really neat setting. That's why this is quite good for somebody starting out because we don't necessarily need to make a neat setting. Cause it's all going to be covered up. This is really um, just functional, just to hold the cabs in place. But you need to be have a, as a rough guide. So I'm going to pop that on the back of my cabochon. I'm going to leave this loop. This is where it's going to join. So I'm going to put this sort of. If I want my claws at um, north, south, east and west then, I'm going to put this so that it sits in between two of those points, so here, okay, so it's sitting just between. And then I'm going to put in the first sort of claw shape around um, here. So if I put my pliers on the wire, I'm using my flat nose pliers or my snipe nose pliers um, to hold the wire because then I can get a really sharp bend if I push against the pliers with my finger, I get a nice sharp bend in the wire. Okay? And then I'm going to take my round nose pliers and hold maybe a centimetre along or half an inch ish along and then bring the wire back down 
to create like a U shape, an elongated U shape. Yeah. Okay. And then flatten those pliers again because we want a nice tight bend. Back onto the wire and bend it back along. Okay, so there's our first claw. So if we sit this back on the cabochon, you can see where I'm going with it. I'm going to put that here. So this claw is going to sit just on the side of that cabochon there. So the next one I need to make is the one that's going to sit on the end, one of the ends. So if I lay this on the cabochon, hold it, <coughs> roughly bring your wire round into the shape of your cabochon. Now these wires, we want to sit sort of half a centimetre, so it's like five mils, sort of in on the back of that cabochon. So there's roughly the shape, and I'm going to put another prong in here. So again, same process, hold the wire in your flat nose pliers, bend up, so it's a nice sharp bend. Put your round nose pliers in, around a centimetre up that wire, and back down again. And you're constantly swapping pliers, so we're going back to the flat pliers now to make a really sharp bend to come back. Okay? And again, don't worry if it's too, a bit skew -iffy. it doesn't really matter. Pop that back down onto the cabochon, and again, bring the wire down into position around the cabochon, so you can see where to put the next prong. I'm going to put the next one in here. So if I carry on doing that. Okay, so here I am on three prongs now. So just the last one to put in on this end here. So I'll do that one. Okay, so there's my last prong in. So what I'm going to do now is cut this wire just about here, because um, I'm going to roll that this one into a loop just the same as I started, and then they're going to be the areas where I can attach those two pieces of the framework together to keep it all in tight. So if I cut that there and scroll it in. So again with my round nose pliers. And these, these are good because these are sort of adjustable, so if you find it's a little bit big, all you do is roll it in a bit more just to pull the frame in. So if I sit that on the back, what I'm aiming for, you can see it's not the most perfect shape, but it's still going to work. So that's why you don't have to be great at this. So sitting that there, you see I want this ring to sort of sit inside the um, circumference of the gem, and these prongs just to overlap. Okay, and it is a little bit long, so I'm going to roll this one in a bit more just to pull it in shorter, and that's how simple that is. So if I just put my prongs of my pliers in and roll that in a little bit, that's going to bring my frame in even more. Okay, so that's each one of your gems, gemstones needs this to be made so that you've got something to hold the gemstone and also stitch it to the frame with. Okay. Okay. But while uh, Jim is just getting that part of the demonstration prepared, I'm going to now give you the opportunity to add these little uh, Tim Holtz sort of foliage pieces to your order. Now, these are included in the design. This is what gives you this extra little bit of uh, attention to detail in the design, doesn't it, Jim? It does, it does. And it also, um, you can also cage cabochons with them, like the one on the end, the pendant on the end. Um, oh, over here, yeah, yeah. This is, I love this design. So I've just bent, I've bent the leaves around. If you flip it over, you can see how they're just stitched together at the back. Oh, my <laughs> dear. I'll tell you what. You see the wire just, you know, it's two of the daisies bent around. Love it. This is the great thing about items like this. You're never limited by, by no. the sort of, the raw finding, if you like. The more yeah. you experiment with it, the more, yeah, uh, the more innovative ways. your design is going to look. Say that again, sorry. Okay, very, very limited in availability on this particular item. And we have created a bundle because we've also added in 10 meters of your 1.25 mil antique bronze wire so you could easily use these color terms because it's probably it's very similar similar to the yeah, color of the actual blanks or uh, 
what, what are they actually described as? Just foliage findings. There yeah. you go. Okay, it's 10.95. So many people already flying through. It's going to be a sellout deal, my producer's saying. Yeah, oh, it's gone, in fact. Yeah. The second we brought it to screen, sold out. There you go. That's how quick it is. What should we do, then? Bit of wire, as well. Oh, Just, go on, then. Yeah. Because we've got the gold wire. <gasps> It the greens with the goals, the moss greens yeah. with the goals would look amazing. I, that would be nice just to accent just parts of the you, of the designs. So. Oh, so you could do a little bit of the gizmoing work. Yeah, or the, just some just small accents with a you know another like metallic. It. The finish. mixed metals in a, a sort of boutique style design like this work beautifully, don't they? Yeah, they do. Yeah, they do. They just draw the eye, I suppose, to yeah. the features. I love yeah, that. and that's got a more of a, a luster than the bare copper, which is quite matte. Yeah. So it would it just like lift. Yeah, certain give areas. A, yeah, give a little like highlight like that. And uh, I've noticed that in here you've got quite a lot of uh, kind of antique gold finishes. You have and foliage pieces as well. In so, in fact, when you um, when you file those or polish those, um, what am I saying? Sand them off. Yeah. Then you, some of them have got a copper undertone, and some of them have got a gold undertone. Ah, okay. So yeah, you've got. So a be great to have some gold wire. Then. Yeah. There you go. That's one mill. Uh, again quite structural wire but it is softer isn't it this Much this softer. variety yeah uh, because it's the uh, the gold plated copper wire so 10 meters one mil and it's your copper soft wire 9.95 again not a uh, hundred percent convinced we're gonna have enough to go round because so mm. many people are flying in for this is this a really sought after wire for it is the yeah, it is it's lovely to use and you can texture it as well because it's not ah. you you do um it's not sealed like um our other plated yeah, wires with yeah. a with a plastic or like it's a coating. It's got the coating, yeah. So when you texture that wire, you you know sometimes lose a bit of that coating. Where this one, you can texture and you don't lose it. Don't the gold stretches. You don't stretches. use any of the plating, yeah. yeah. The, 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 it's, to, it's to do, actually, with the electrons in the metal, isn't it? So mm. you, you, as you band them, they spread out as yeah. opposed to sort of being lifted off. off. Yeah. That's right, yeah. Um, That's right. Amazing opportunity to get hold of that then for 9 95 um, I will just say... If you've got it in your basket, check out very, very quickly because most of our phone buyers are coming through and grabbing two of those. So they've got 20 meters in their wear. And, and actually, a lot of the web buyers are doing the same thing. Congratulations to Belinda. You've got two. Hillary's got two. Claire's got two. Laura's got two as well. 9 95 is your price point for that. Uh, sorry to interrupt, Gemma, again, but we want to give you all of these deals as well. Yes, yeah. Right, okay, so what I'm going to do is stitch these together and then put this last one onto the frame. You can see how that process works. So I'm taking the 0.4 wire now from the kit and I'm stitching through those two loops that I made um, to start me off. So the one at the end of the, of the wire and the other one at the beginning. So all I'm going to do is just pop a couple of stitches through. Just one should do it, one should hold it all. So that's now that frame's um, sturdy and secure. And then I'm going to take one of the tails of the wire and I'm going to come across the frame to one of the prongs and then just wrap twice, nice and tight, around the prongs. And that's going to hold them together for me. And then up to the next prong and wrap twice around just to hold it. And the same with the next one, twice around to hold it in place. And again, onto the next one, twice around, to hold it in place. Okay, so that's nice and secure now. So what I can do now is I can push my um, cabochon onto the frame and just make sure it's lined up so that you haven't got um, any of the wrapping showing. If you find you have, just give it a squidge just to manipulate it into place so that it changes the shape slightly. If I sit it on, they're fairly evenly spaced. It's going to hold the cabochon. So you push down firmly with, the, with your fingers onto the onto the stone, gripping the frame beneath it. And what I do is I lift, in fact, I'm just gonna start, start this off myself. I'm gonna lift these slightly so that they are um, just up off the table slightly. Pop them, pop this on the top, and then try and do it evenly. So I'm gonna do north and south at the same time because then if I just did north, what I'm doing is I'm probably gonna push the gemstone South. So if I do north and safe, south at the same time, I'm going to have more chance of keeping it in the right place. So pinch those together, pull them upright, and push them onto the gemstone. Okay, then the other side, we're going to now do east and west, do them at the same time as before, and therefore keeping it all together. Okay, so there we go. Our cabochon is now 
safely inside that framework. Okay, it's not going anywhere. So I can now stitch this with the tails that are left into the frame that I've created. Okay, so it brings me back to my frame. So I want it to come here. So all I do is just pop it like so, position it where I want it. I've made it roughly symmetrical. You'll find that you've got enough scope, both in the sample pack or the demo pack that I got and the one that I used to make the design had very, um, had gemstones in there that are symmetrical. You know, there's t almost two of each shape. So I'm, I'm imagining that most of them will have the ability to do something quite symmetrical like this. Yeah. There seems to be a real sort of spectrum of, of yeah. shapes, doesn't there? So you, you, you've got something for every design scenario, I think. Yeah, yeah definitely. You can, I'm sure you can achieve this with any of the packs. Okay, so I've, what I'm doing is using these tails now to stitch around my framework and through the framework on the back of the gemstone. So just a few stitches. It doesn't need much, um, just enough to hold it in place um, for now because... Um, as we add more and more details and elements into this piece, it's going to become um, more and more firm because, you know, there's lots of stitching and weaving in and out of this frame to be done. Okay. So that's stitched in there. And I'm going to try and stitch it. I'm going to attempt to stitch it on every one of these, what should we call them, struts across the frame. Here. So this framework now can now be stitched here where they cross over. So go in between that cross point with your wire and a few stitches in. And remember, just keep an eye on the position of it because we do want it to be roughly the same each side. Okay, and then one more stitch here and that should be secure. Okay, and I may need to just pop another. You'll you'll know, you'll feel if it's secure or not. And if you find it needs a, a few stitches um, here and there just to help it stay put, then just pop them in. You don't have to be too. Um, does that just come with experience, or is it? Yeah. You can just literally feel well, you're when it's sort of taut. Enough. If it's if it's wobbling, <coughs> just pop a stitch in the place where it's vulnerable. You know, you, you it will be easy for you to identify. It's not, okay. you know, it's not going to be difficult. Yeah. Okay, and then just make sure it's roughly the same. So I'm pretty pleased that that's all symmetrical. So I'm going to leave that there. That looks amazing already. And when you think <laughs> about how it's going to end up with all yeah. this stuff. This is it. I mean, you could leave it there. I mean, Sammy did a wonderful design using three cabs the other day, similar, different right. framework. So you could use the cab setting technique from her designer inspiration the other day and put it on this frame or vice versa. This is the great thing about the inspiration show. It's all about just taking yeah. the techniques that suit your style That's and it. adopting them into your design. And making your own designs up from there, yeah. Fantastic. That's ideal. So okay. the next stage then? So next stage then is we're going to add in all the sort of elements and... Um, detailing. So we've got a mix of details in here. We've got some weaving work, um, which looks really complicated, but it, it really isn't. And then we've got some gizmo coils as well. So I'm going to show you how to do each of those elements and then how to bring them into the design. So first off, um, the, weave, the weaving bit. I've got one started here. And basically what you do is, what, well, what I do, is I just take a nice length of um, my one mil wire is the framework for the weave and I'm using the 0.4 wire to, to do the actual weaving and you can see it's just a long two lengths like, like so, so I've doubled the wire at the end so I've got a loop there and then two tails here now this is just really repetitive and it's a great thing to have just on your lap when you're doing something else like you're helping the kids with the homework or waiting for them to finish in the jungle gym or whatever. It's something really you can do and not pay too much focus on, you know? That's what I always think about uh, chain mail. That's why I like it, because yeah. it's kind of like non-committal. Yeah. It's like, you know, it's quite therapeutic. You can just, I can just open jump rings yeah. all day. Yeah. To be quite honest with you. <laughs> That's it. You can pick it up and put it down. You're not going to get lost with it or anything. Sure. So this, this is why I say this is a nice one that you do in little stages. Okay, so I've got a length of wire here. So the weave that I'm doing... And you can do any of the weaves 
um, that you've seen before, and that Laura shows us all sorts of weaves. So, um, but this one I, I found worked. It's like a ribbon. So what I'm going to do is the figure of eight weave. I'm going to sort of <coughs> spread these um, prongs out slightly because that gives us more manoeuvrability if they're spread out. And what we do is we go once around, one complete time around one of the uh, wires, and then you bring the wire up through the middle in between, hence creating that figure of eight, okay? okay? And then we go, instead of going straight back, we go round that wire one complete time, back down and up through those wires again, and then round to the other one. Okay, so all the way around one of the wires, back round, and then through the middle, and there. Okay, so all the way around, back through the middle, and then to the other one, and all the way around. That's you just a, you, that's just a it is, yeah, it pattern is. that you continue to and do. And you get quicker and quicker as you go. Some people, this is, um, they turn their work like that right. to do it. So they'll do one loop, and then turn. And then do the loop on the other. Do the loop on the wow. other side. So you can do that if you find that easier. You know, that's something you that you can do. just find their do. own sort of way, don't that's they? It. And whatever's, I find whatever's sort of natural to you, I suppose. That's it. I find that this works just as well for me. And the more you do, the quicker you get. Now, the beauty of this is some people say to me, how do you keep it in a straight line? Well, you can see it's really not necessary. If I bring that, you can see how wibbly-wobbly that is. You don't keep it in a straight no, line, basically. No, and I, I've actually aimed not to because I want more texture. I want it yeah. to look like it's, it's grown. Like a vine right? leaf yeah. or some uh, vine sort of... Uh, that's the word. Branch. Yeah, a branch I'll tell you with what, the I definitely shouldn't have had any <laughs> cold remedies for a kennel screen. And um, we're actually going to bring the other Tim Holtz oh, I haven't items. Had those. These are the keys and locks. Oh, I like them. Um, and uh, we've also included the amethyst heart shaped cabochon in there. How perfect would that be alongside the greens? My favourite combination of colours in jewellery. You could actually set that in the centre as a feature, couldn't you? Yeah, you could, yeah. So it would work yeah. just as well in the design. You could put the amethyst cabochon into the centre as a, as a focal point, if you like. Yeah, and it would be a le less, well, I don't know, less steampunky, maybe, than having the green in there. So Very true, so you give it that a slightly more romantic yes. lift, if you yeah, like. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, And there's the, the keys and the hearts as well, as well. Quite romantic. Giving somebody the key to your heart. Yes, perhaps. that's very good. Well like that. Yeah. Uh, June's text in to say hi both. Love the show and Gemma's brill designs. Even liking some of Ed's jokes. <laughs> can you even? No need for sarcasm. Uh, can you please tell me if this wire can be soldered? That's a good question from June. Yes, yes, it can. Yeah, you can um, um, solder it. You, you'd still need a nice soft um, silver. Solder yeah. to solder it to, but yeah, you can, and you can get patinas to change the colour of your silver so it looks copper, so it sort of hides the joints. Oh, I used to like doing a bit of soldering in technology at school. Yeah, I've done it's a bit, only, not successfully. Only, do you know? It's funny that I actually work on a craft channel. It's the only qualification I have. Uh, I didn't pass at school. What? So it was uh, designer technology. Was it? Yeah. <laughs> well, I didn't either. Actually. A's and B's for <laughs> everything else, and um, just spell technology. Wasn't my thing. No. Wasn't I was more academic. Uh, Eleanor from Le Sample, who uh, you met in the Hi week. Yeah. She was on your course. Yeah, I'm going to see Eleanor in. Are October. you? Yeah. Oh, I wish I'd come into that workshop. And <laughs> I should have snagged that. No, she was the she was famous for the day. I said I felt actually quite starstruck because yeah. we're always talking. Yeah, to we her. always talk about Eleanor because <laughs> she's one of our global customers. And how beautiful was Eleanor as well? She's very striking. She's very beautiful. Yes. Yeah. Gemma, your designs are awesome. Loved your course last week. I had so much fun and learnt so much. Looking forward to the rest of the show today. There you go. Thanks, oh, and another message. They're loving you today, yeah. Gemma. <laughs> Joanne takes in a guest. Oh, okay. It's a limerick. Uh -huh. Oh, now you're yes. two for one. God, somebody needs to write another Ed limerick now. <laughs> a guest designer who's called Gemma Crow does lovely wire work, you know. How she can inspire with a few bits of wire is wonderful. Thank you. Love, Joan. Oh, I love thanks, that. That was yeah. pretty cool. Yeah, I like that one. Yeah, These the, are all going on my the, website later. I was just thinking, I'm going to I'm gonna have to write, I'm going to have to watch the loop and write that first one down because yeah. it was pretty yeah, they're great. special. Okay, yeah, but Gemma's 2-1 up now on me, so I need a limerick. Nothing offensive. <laughs> no. <laughs> the boys in the gallery said, we'll write you one. <laughs> No we, no, we can't put that on there. Right, um, 8.95 for the Tim Holtz uh, and the Amethyst Cabochon deal there. Okay, right. So I, I've just been weaving away there while you've been 
while we've been chattering. Yes. That's how, that's how easy it is. And it grows really quickly. Now, one thing I will say is it can be, when you start down here weaving, you've got these long tails to weave up along, it can get a bit, you know, get tangled up. So what I tend to do is I tend to work towards the end and slide it down regularly. So then gradually it comes down here, and then I haven't got great big long tails that I'm trying to weave into. Okay, so to, to slide the, the, um, the work, I'll just show you how best to do it. So just take a small section sort of under your thumb and finger at once and pull and stretch out the weave. Now it looks you know, like you could, you've broken it, but you haven't. And then pull each section down at one at a time, okay? And then it will gradually all come in further down. Okay, and even these thinner sections might take a bit more manipulating, but they will, as long as you do it gradually, they will all fall into place and you can move your, your weaving down your wires, okay? So that's, that's a good tip um, if you get in a tangle with your wires. You don't like working with great long lengths. Just work at one end and slide it down regularly, okay? So now I'm going to put this into um, my framework. And I'm going to start, it's up to you where you start, but I, I generally start in the middle and then work outwards either side because I find I get more symmetry or um, I can work quite heavily in the middle and then taper it out. But as long as I've got my centre done, it informs the rest of the design. Well, I suppose if you wanted to go for more of an asymmetrical look and you wanted to make it look like growth, you could start at one end and do more detail and then yeah, spread it out you could, the other way. it depends on the shape yeah. you want. I mean, I wanted a heavier central uh, mm -hmm. focal to and work outwards so but it's up to you okay, cool. you start anywhere so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave this as a loop because that might help with something later to attach in so I'm gonna pop pop it just hook it into the frame okay and give it a pinch and that's just latched in there now and I don't want to waste bit, yeah, that's quite interesting actually so you, you just built a little sort of anchor loop into yeah. your design there because yeah. it might help you out Later, later on yeah that's I might good. anchor something that's, into that's it an interesting part of the planning in the design process yeah and I think you just pick up these things as you go as you you know been doing things you think ah last time I got caught out with right. nothing there so yeah, it's not that. hurting to have it so you may as well have it there waiting just in case okay that's good right so that's attached in there now what I don't want to do because I don't know maybe because I'm lazy or I don't know <laughs> but what I don't want to do is hide any of my weaving because it took me a long time to do it so I want to position it I don't want to um, have it hidden behind gemstones so what I'm going to do is I'm just move that just that weaving up a little bit therefore when I put something over the top I'm not losing any of my weaving okay so this bit is really up to you just free form so now this I'm going to use almost like a piece of wire in its own right and just twist it round like a ribbon so you see I've just all I've done is turned it over and it's given me like this undulation. Okay, I'm just gonna sort of hook it around the top and it, it really is up to you how you do this. So I'm, I've twisted it again because I like the look of how that works and just keep it in place. If you want to, as you go, you can put a stitch in, but I find I do do this and then think, no, not quite keen on that. So if I tip that, you can see. I think now I'm not quite keen on how that's working, so I just take it out and I might try it somewhere else. Uh -huh. So I quite like that turning there. Okay, so I'll keep that one there and then I'm going to bring it round, maybe twist it again. Bunch this weave up, and there really is no fixed fixed way of doing it and that's sort of the beauty of it and that's how everybody is, is going to look completely different so even if you say I'm going to take this design on and have a go myself it will look completely different to mine and if I do another one it will look completely different to my first okay so I'm going to leave I'm going to say I quite like that how that is so I'm going to leave that in that shape so then I'll take the tail ends and anchor them in just around one of your frame wires just by pulling it around okay and I'm going to leave these tails because they're going to be little flourishes and details later if I want them all right so what I do is I would put I do three or four of these ribbons like this and put them in first and they're going to be then you know the first layer then of growing this piece okay okay so if you actually have a look at the finished product you can see how 
those have kind of interwoven into the designs. And you say what about three or four different sections? Yeah, those there's, th there's three Just sections. Three, yeah, so I've got this centre <coughs> one, um, and I do one for this side. I might need to do a longer one here because I've taken this one off this way, so I need a shorter one there and a longer one there. And you can but see the, the path it needs to follow and the kind of length you'll mm. need. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And as you add more in, you know, it will take it will take on a different feel anyway. So when you look at the finished product, it looks really, really intricate, but like you said at the, at the start, it is like a, a jigsaw really, because you're is. now just building the pieces and you're fitting them all That's together. It. You just make, make elements and then fit it together right. Perfect. So now I'm going to do a gizmo coil, and for those of you who have never used a gizmo before, I'll just show you how you I've do it. I've never used a gizmo before. Have you not? No. Really? No. <laughs> how strange how you, how is that? How have you to escape doing that? I don't know, especially 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 since I had to get this hole cut in the desk for the gizmo especially when I was the manager, the and I've never used it. Shall we make Lorraine's day? Would you like to use and it? And let me use a gizmo. Okay, here you go. You have to show me. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I okay. will. I'll take you through. Right. So here we've got. Can we see it clearly? Turn this round. There you go. So here you've got this. Um, you've got your. Mm, what's it called? Jig. Little uh, jig, yeah. A holder. And you've got a rod. So you've got this area in the rod. So what you do is you take your wire, I'm using 0.6 here by the way, and wrap it around. Well, very, both parts? Yeah, both parts. Like quite, that? Quite crudely. Leave yourself a nice long tail on there so you're not right. having to work too hard. Have I messed this up already? No. No? no. Okay. Okay, just give it a squeeze so that it's nice and tight okay. on there. That's, that's that. Right. So now you hold with one hand, hold this firmly downwards. I'll tell you what, we need a screwdriver in it, don't That's we? That's mine, yes. It gets abused, I'm afraid. Okay. And then turn your hand round and round. Oh. So pull, oh, pull down see. with the wire to give you some tension. You I've see you're going messed it up, back it. That's right. Just don't go back the other way. That's it. Right. Now I understand. Right, again. right okay. So if I pull it tight, yeah. then I'll get a gizmo. There you go. Oh, yeah. Simple. And no, so it's not. It it's really difficult. And look how brilliantly <laughs> I've done it. So, do the whole rod. <laughs> How much do you need? All of it. Really? Yeah, go on. Time <sighs> him. <laughs> I'll tell you what, my physio will be loving this. I've torn my rotator cuff. This is actually... The worst. ...really hurting my shoulder. <laughs> oh, stop, stop. <laughs> stop then, I'll do it. So, I, I generally, once, I, once I've got going, I generally just... Oh, look, she's got her own little technique. Around. Look at that! Yay! I would have been there till about 4 p.m. So can we can we read the next limit that's coming for me? Oh no! Two all. No, come on. He's got to do this whole Gemma. reel of wires. So it's the perfect opportunity, <laughs> Phil. It's come in from Diane. It says there was a presenter called Ed. He has quite a big head. <laughs> His jokes are bad. He's quite a lad. But my favourite presenter is Ed. Oh. Get in, <laughs> Diane. And there's another one. Three, two. No. Back of the net. <laughs> <laughs> That's my big head coming through there. Right, I'm going to make some up. There was a presenter called Ed. He's <laughs> ill and should be in bed. Oh. He amuses with jokes. He's a brilliant bloke, bringing his wires and gems and thread. Jurassic Park. Uh, look. <laughs> Another one. Claire's texting as well. Four, two. Roses are red, violets are blue. Ed, you promised me a gift, but you didn't come through. <laughs> <laughs> I'm having that one. Back to three, two. Uh, Gemma, you are so clever. I love this bit of necklace. That's uh, guest, design, uh, guest designer Claire from uh, yesterday's inspiration Thanks, Claire. show. Thank you. Oh, and look at that. Gemma has expertly created the whole gizmo coil in the time. Okay, so now we've just got to get it off of the man. Gracious door. winning as always from the big dog there. <laughs> okay, well, I'm going to take the take the coil off the man drawer, and I'm twisting it off because it's. Because you just start it off really tight. Ed. <laughs> so, within this design, we have lots of different opportunities to actually use the, the patinoing techniques that we're going to look at. Oh, yeah, 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 loads and loads of opportunities. So, we give people the chance now to add the patinoings yeah, to their order. These ones you can add at any stage as well, so you can oh, add right, before okay. or after. So, you and I have, have done some of the patina before. Um, with the sulfur one, haven't we? Yeah, it's quite an intense process, isn't it? Like yeah. you have to be quite precise. But these ones, you can just apply. Is that yeah, right? They're just ready to go. A lot like a lot like a paint. You know, they they, they act 
and behave. So if you've ever painted anything, you can use these. You don't need to have any special instructions or materials or products or tools. That you're just ready to go. Brilliant. So this is a three pack, and it's got um, kind of a well. Actually, it's a great great name for it. Rusted colours because you've got the rust, the clay, and the cinnabar. Yeah. Actually, these are kind of like uh, the masala colours that are going to be popular. This they are very much yeah. particular season, aren't they? Uh, so they're all 14 millilitres in size. Yes. Um, and so you've got three different colour tones. They'll go an awfully long way, won't they? They will. They, they do go a long way. You can apply them with a sponge so you can get a really nice, fine finish oh, as well. Like so that. that makes them stretch out as well. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, they're just nine ninety five today. And uh, looking at the kind of uh, the packaging, the branding, this is presumably the sort of creme de la creme of patina. Yeah, and Ranger, Ranger, fabulous well known for their you know quality, so okay. you can trust them. There you go, then. Yeah. This is the brand to go for, the range one. Uh, vintage. So I've used those on, well, I've actually used the, the verdigris ones. So this gives you like a rust finish. And the great thing about having all these different colours is, you, as you know, rust isn't all the same colour. It's, you know, speckled D, darker, um, browns, mm. bright mm. oranges. And that's what that gives you, that ability to create a really realistic Where rusty Where can we look. see these ones? Sorry. On the what? earrings. Yeah. So on the earrings, you've got these, these colours. Ones. These, yeah. Yeah. So we've actually got this yeah. exact colour tone being used on the mm. little blanks there. You can see how rust, they look rusty, don't they? They do. I mean, if you flip it over, you'll see how, it, how they started. Yeah. You see the bright copper so that's there. the kind of, yeah, the polished copper finish, mm. and then you've created that kind of vintage rusted effect yeah. using these exact patinas. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Okay, and then uh, which other colours have you used? Have you used the greens? The greens, You've got the yeah. greens there as well, yeah. So I've used, I've rusted that one with the, the oranges and then applied a bit of the green on top to make oh, it so. look like slightly verdigris. Are they the ones? Yeah, they are. You were right. Don't know why I ever bother for questioning <laughs> the producers. When I was a producer, I didn't want to be questioned, but uh, <laughs> I think I'll do it anyway. Yeah. Just, you just like to make sure, giving them the right one. So these are um, these are great alongside the cabochons, actually, aren't they? Because you've got the moss greens. What yeah. are they called? Verdigris and jade. Jade. Ooh, yeah. Actually. We had some jadeite in the week, and it was yeah. beautiful, and it was that exact colour tone, actually. 9 95 for the uh, bunch of weathered copper patinas there. That's another three-pack, 14 mil in each bottle. Again, going to go an awfully long way, aren't they? Gorgeous. And there's another message for you, Gemma. Oh, ah, no, yes. no, it's 4-3. <laughs> Gemma Crow, who we all know, is a wonderful girl. Yes. Is a wonderful girl. Makes bangles and rings and beautiful things. Then gives us all a twirl from <laughs> Susie. Brilliant. I like I'm that Susan. one. Oh, here we go. So it was four three. Don't worry. I think it's about both of us. Oh, so okay. We'll say five, We've got a joint four, one. five four. Okay. Okay. <laughs> there was a fellow called Ed who should have stayed at home in bed. But he did go to the DI show and gave Gemma his cold instead. <laughs> hey, I like that one. I'm trying not to be like oh, too yeah, it's all right. I've already been invited. I can't yeah. help myself. <laughs> um, okay, we'll give you the third pack now. These are uh, the kind of violet kind of colour tones, the purples and the pinks, aren't they? Yeah, and they're perfect for the next. I've used them. Ah, I've used them in the next, next one. Kit. Yeah. Oh yeah, of course, because it's got big purple agate in it, hasn't yeah. it? Yeah. There you go. Sneaky peek. Uh, but we'll bring it on screen anyway. It's nine ninety five. There you go. I love those colours. I, mean, well, I would, I suppose. I really love these ones. And, you know, the, the other ones are natural, you know, for your natural, more organic looking pieces. And those are for your fern metals. You know, they're, they're, you wouldn't find metal in that colour naturally, <laughs> whereas the others you would. But um, yeah, these are lovely. I thought I'd just walk off screen <laughs> and destroy some of your jewellery. No, I just thought I'd bring one of the designs on. There you go. Look, you can see the effect. Guess he made that. <laughs> <laughs> Shameless promotion. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> this country. Right, okay, moving on. Right. I've just made the gizmo coil, but I'm actually going to put it aside for a minute and show you how to put in some of these um, Tim Holtz um, details because actually I use the gizmos more towards the end to sort of cover little areas that I, that I thought needed. Um, needed covering 
So what, I, what I've done is sometimes I've used these little um, leaves and flowers where there's vulnerability. So for example, maybe vulnerable, to be honest, there's not much vulnerability in here, but just if there was, then I would use them sort of to hold this gemstone maybe in firmer here or um, my board back. But other than that, they're decorative as well. So that they can serve two purposes. So it's worth knowing that if your settings aren't quite right or not quite strong enough, then um, use these as well. So they've got a, a little hook in here and you've got all these tails left from attaching your gemstones. So these are ideal for um, pulling these into your frame. So I'm gonna pull, I'm gonna use this one here, pull it up through the frame. And I'm gonna sit, sit this little metal piece little tab on the end I'm going to sit it underneath the gemstone there and stitch it so if I turn it over you can see the back I'm going to stitch that in all these tails you will get a bit annoyed with all these tails but it really is worth hanging on to them if you can if you can um, cope with them springing around then do because they're they're useful for stitching bits in and you don't have to keep adding every time you add a piece of wire you've got to tidy an end away so it's worth not having too many ends Okay. It's kind of like playing with my son, really. Yeah. You know, it's fun and everything, but uh, I have to tidy up at the end. <laughs> yeah. I am president business. Do you know what I do? Really good thing, good tip. Go on. You know shower Top curtains? Parenting tips. I change my shower curtains every month, like, you know, you do, don't you? Just I do. Change them. So what I do is I keep them, and if we do something messy, I put the shower curtain down. They play on that and then I just pick it all up in the shower and chuck it all away. It's not a bad idea actually, yeah. especially since last night we were playing with a bowl of oats, <laughs> porridge oats, I had to hoover <laughs> this morning. I bet my neighbours love me actually because I'm like a bit obsessive about cleaning. Oh yes. Yeah, so like at quarter to seven this morning I was like, can I hoover now on a Sunday morning? I thought I better wait an hour. <laughs> so I did it. By eight o'clock it was hoovered. Deal with it. No. Right. It's going to be tidy. So there it is sticking out, and I don't want it sticking out like that. So all I'm going to do, they're really flexible, so I'm going to bend it over and push it onto the gemstone um, and allow it to sit on. So, and it's as simple, that's how simple it is to add in these Tim Holtz bits and bobs. Um, and if you want them to sit so that they're not poking up from the stone, just use your pliers just to bend them in slightly, and then they should sit much more flush onto the stone for you okay so then add all your elements like that in so you can add a few and um, the flowers are really nice they sit in nicely and also they can cage the gemstone as well if you want to but that's that bit now let's go for some um gizmo quills put the gizmo quills in next so again you've made a gizmo coil cut it off so it's just the coil and i've threaded this onto some 0.6 wire i'm going to thread still has that kind of springy quality to it even though once you've put it onto the wire there yeah yeah it does yeah definitely and what i've actually done is i've just pulled it out slightly so it's not quite so tight it goes a little bit further then yeah. okay so pull it out a little bit and then anchor it into your frame wherever you wherever you want to start it really and all you need to do is just take your wire and wrap it once or twice around is to hold it in place to start. Okay, and then push that in there. And then all we're going to do is just, um, I find it's good to follow lines. So if I, this is, this almost informs everything else. So now all my gemstones are sort of going to follow in and around these same lines, keeping the whole piece quite fluid. Mm. So I'm going to pop that in there and I might do a swirl just to fill that space. So literally like that, that's that's quite nice there. I like how that's going. So this one I want to put, I'm going to probably bring it back around. Maybe that sits nicely there. Yeah, so it's a case of just now sitting and framing. What you're doing is framing these gemstones, but just um, quite fluidly. So I'm actually happy at how that little bit of coil works. So I'm going to then take the end and stitch that in. Or, or anchor it in so just again wrapping around the frame a couple of times and then to keep because you can see it's springing around to keep it in place I use one of these little tails that I haven't cut off bring it around to the back and just pop a stitch 
over the frame to hold the gizmo coil where you want it. And because it's a gizmo coil, it's got, and I've stretched it out slightly, you've got all these sort of teeth that, um, that you can dig the wire into so they sort of, all your little stitches hide inside. Okay, that one around there, bring it back through. It is addictive. You know, I say you can pick it up and put it down, do it in stages, but it is addictive. Actually, you do you one think, bit. Oh, I'll just do a little bit more. Yeah, just and I'll just add this, more. and I'll just add that, and you, before you know it, it actually came together a lot quicker than I imagined it would. I've always sort of been put off doing a big piece like this because I think, oh, it's going to take me forever. It's a gorgeous design. But, um, but it actually didn't take too I suppose as well, when you, when you do create something like this, which is quite an artistic piece as well, you get, you know, that sort of feeling of achievement as well though. So. Yeah, absolutely. I, yeah, I'm really pleased with this one. I was really pleased with this piece. I love it because, as I say, the more I look at it, the more sort of attention to detail I notice within the design. Do yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah, that's, that's it. And I'll tell you what this would be really nice for if you're trying to incorporate um, bits of jewellery from ancestors or treasured trinkets, things like nice. that, keys, because you could just hide them in amongst all your bits and pieces and it would look nice. Oh, it'd be like, it could be like a little time capsule piece, yeah, couldn't it? Yeah, yeah I like you that. You think of Fee Potter's work, Fiona Potter's work, she's got lots of work like that and I can imagine this working in that, in that sort of style. Way, yeah. Yeah. That'd be, in yeah. fact, if you've got the sort of doming resin and you wanted to put little like sepia images yeah. inside, you could actually use those as your cabochons within the pieces. Yeah, yeah, you could. Inspiration from you the big indeed. dog. Um, we're going to give you more opportunities more to wire. add this Good. soft copper wire. Okay. So I think you've got 10 meters of the one mil, and then you've got right three of the 10 meters of 0.6. So 30 meters of 0.6 and 20 meters of 0.4. So 10 meters of one mil, 30 meters of 0.6 mil. 20 meters of 0.4 mil. That's, that's sort of that out in my head. That's okay. a good combination because the gizmo, I would always gizmo with the 0.6. So gizmo so you need a takes bit up more a little bit more. Yeah. yeah. You won't need quite as much of the one because you just need it for the frame. Yeah. And then the 0.4 for the detailing, 20 meters should be enough to, yeah. to help you do all that. Okay, yeah. we're going to read the price on screen. I will tell you, it is just 9.95 for all of that. That's 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 meters. Only drawback is that I've already got fewer than 50 of these remaining in stock. Let's have a quick glitz for out the door. It's a brilliant price, absolutely brilliant. That is amazing, isn't it? Yeah. 9 for yeah. that. You don't usually get that sort of discount um, unless you're buying the same gauge in a higher quantity. Right. Do you see what I mean? So yes, the, absolutely. But like you've got a mix, it's perfect. Oh, of course, yeah, because that's kind of where like other suppliers would, yeah. would cash yeah. in on you, I suppose, because yeah. they'd say, oh, well, yeah, that's a different game, so you've got to pay for that. Yeah. So you don't get a variety. There you go, wholesale deals from Jewelry Maker, no matter what. We've got a question regarding your piece. Okay. Oh, this one's not a question. This is coming from Eleanor. Oh, it's a limerick. Yay. Like, yeah. Are we at level again? Five yes. A jewelry designer <laughs> called Gemma, whose creations are always a blinder. There's nothing she can't do, and she shares it with you. Oh. We all thank JM for finding her. Ah, oh. there you go. <laughs> but actually, I can learn. So. <laughs> in fact, I had to badger for months to get in. Do you remember? Wasn't I in charge at the time? Yeah, <laughs> I know. You have to badger me very hard. Surely. Yes, I did. I did. You get me in trouble. <laughs> did you? Yeah, I did. Then what did you do? I did a Sunday. Send me a picture. I did a Sunday <laughs> sofa, <laughs> and then. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah, you did. When you said did the Sunday sofa, you were straight on. Then it, no, then it took nearly a year. Had a lot on my plate. Right. <laughs> do you put felt on the back? No, uh, no and I would. Um, the only reason I haven't is because I wanted to be able to show the whole piece today if because the photography is of the back of it as well. But yes, but if I was selling it on, backing. selling it on, I would definitely put some sort of backing on there to make it really comfortable. Okay. Yeah. There you go. Good, and hide it because it gets then, quite actually. messy at the back. Oh yeah, because you did say that about yeah. the, the the kind of the fixings, didn't yeah. you? You can yeah. hide them all with the felt back in. Yeah. Okay. I would. Um, we'll carry on then because okay. we're, we're going to bring this to a close uh, in five ten minutes. Yeah, so we've so only we want to crack on with the bit, rest of the design. Two, two little elements left to do. So okay. another simple one. So now it's adding. If you imagine we've done this all over. Um, now I'm going to add little pearl accents, and that's it really. So I would take the tails that I've still got left from my cabochons, again 
um, allowing us not to have to add any more wire in. And just thread in now and pop in the pearls where there's the gaps and they just add little accents and highlights. So on occasions I've used sort of um, a, a long row of pearls to actually create some definition but then sometimes I've used just a cluster just to fill a gap so you see there that just fills that little space quite nicely there. So just thread them in and again just poke the wire through and attach it somewhere at the back or through a coil and that's those in place. It's as simple as that and that is it then really you just keep growing and adding gemstones in as you go mm -hmm. in all the spaces um, and then finally really it's um, using again it's gap filling so if you see a little space um, where you need a bit of detail for example here if I needed something would you go for like the little flower I would go like that? I would definitely put some more flowers and bits and pieces yeah, yeah. like that in I was right should I pop that one in go on let's use a brad because oh, I haven't sorry no that's fine because I haven't shown you how to use these that, that's, was, that's actually what I was thinking. I was thinking, I don't know how those go. Yeah, in. Right, okay, cool. right, so these are um, split pins. People call them brads. I know the ones. Yeah. yeah. Um, so all you do is you pop them through your... You remember them at school if you wanted to make like a moving, like an arm yeah, and a leg yeah, and a horse or something. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. So um, pop them through your um, flower and then find, a, find where you want to position them. So I'm going to position them here. So split the pin slightly so that it goes over a wire or between the wires. And then um, what we need is something to anchor it to at the back. So this is why these bits sort of go in last because by the time um, you've done all your other pieces, all your other bits and bobs, you'll have lots of wires for these to anchor to. But if you can see, I've just poked it up through the back there. And what I'll do is I'll just pop Mm, let me find a different, I'm going to find a different space for it where I can really demonstrate where it can go here. <coughs> so I'm going to put it in, <coughs> put the split pin in up here. Let's see if I get it through and then see if I can get the visible on the screen. So there, these ones go in sort of as a, sort of the latter stages of putting this design together because they need anchor points. So pop that there. Can we see that? It's just poking through here. The pin's still um, together at the moment. There we go. Yeah, so then once it's in position, you just pull these apart. And then I use my um, round nose pliers or whatever's handy, actually, just to bend these little prongs apart and sit them into your wire work at the back push them in. They're really, really soft metal, so they bend and pinch really nicely. And then that's hooked in there and anchored in. So you turn it round and there it is, there's a little element oh, in there. That's nice. I like okay. that. So there's it, little details. Um, final detail then that you might see in that design that I haven't shown you yet okay. is um, just little wire flourishes. So I'm going to have, you're going to have lots of these tails from your um, figure eight weaves that you've put in. So if you, that's the ones, yeah. So with these tails, again, they just add another layer to your to your um, work. So all I do is maybe make put my finger on top of where I want the spiral or curl to be, pull the wire around, and it makes a loop. And you can keep going to make a double double loop. So just pulling the wire underneath your finger, and then with the ends. If they're too long, trim them down. I'm going to trim that one a little bit because I don't want a massive spiral because I don't really want to cover my gemstones. I want them peeking out, but I don't want them covered. Um, and then on the end of this wire, if I take my round nose pliers right to the tip of the wire and just roll, roll it in, create a nice loose, loose spiral. Okay. And then just position it roll it in and position it where you want. Again, using your little wires or your tails just to come up through the frame and tie it all into place. And that is all you need to know. Yes. Okay? So it's just you growing your own piece now. And the doves, obviously the doves sit in there.
good pan. What did they do? Well, you just said you growing your own piece about this foliage inspired foliage design. Inspired. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, that's what um, happened. Yeah, it could take there is still some very limited availability remaining on the kit because everybody hasn't checked out their baskets. So everything you get, including the uh, soft cover wires, the two strands of pearls, the two strands of shell doves, and 675 carats of moss agate cabochons for 36.95. Gemma was saying that uh, she would have been happy to purchase the kit of 48.60, wouldn't you? I definitely think it's worth it. Yeah. But Just uh, one more point yeah, quickly sorry. on that kit is the cabochons. Um, the carat weight is usually our cabochons are a lot um, deeper, so they're heavier, so you get less. Actually, you've made a great point. So I you can actually get about 15 I, cabochons. I'll just show you. If you have a look, they're actually a much um, less domed cabochon, if you yeah. like. So there's not the same yeah. depth to the cabochon that we might see normally, which makes them perfect for this particular design. And it means you get a far greater number of cabochons That's in the right. kit. Yeah, I think it's about double the size of the usual, double yeah. the amount of the I usual cabochon I think you'll probably be right, because I did notice that um, they normally put them in a little dish for me. And I couldn't fit them all in the dish. That's oh wow! So you've still that's got that's what I've got left. Huge numbers remaining of, from making all of those. So yeah, you've got a really sort of cabochon-heavy piece, haven't you? You've got the other one, and you've still got all of those left. Yeah. That is a great point, actually. So that's a massive benefit to designers because actually, more often than not, you don't really need that that depth, do you? No. On the cabochon, because no. you still get the effect. And I Great probably effect. wouldn't have put five in one piece if they were our usual yes. um, he very heavy cabs. Because it might have been a little bit overpowering, <laughs> yeah. I suppose. Mm. There you More go. Humanity. That's what we want from our expert designers, those little benefits. Um, if you do want to grab the kit, it's available right now for 36 95 But as I say, very limited availability, so grab it while you can. 30-day money-back guarantee, as always, here at Jewelry Maker. So, you know, if it's not perfect when you get it home, you can always send it back, but I can't see too many of those being returned to us. We are now going to go to a quick break. Thank you so much for that demonstration, Gemma. And uh, we're going to continue to get more inspiration from Gemma very, very soon. So don't go away. We'll be back in two. Download the Jewelry Maker app today. You can watch our Jewelry Maker shows live. View all the details of the item that is currently on air, as well as browsing all the items from today's show. You can also minimize the video or switch to use as a companion app. Get the Jewelry Maker app today and boost your viewing experience. If you love classic jewellery, then why not come and join guest designer Gemma Crow on our vintage workshop. Gemma will guide you through various beading and wirework techniques, which will inspire you to create timeless designs from a bygone era. The full course includes a selection of wire, a selection of findings and charms, a bead scoop, use of all relevant tools and equipment, a buffet lunch and refreshments, a tour of the studio and a visit to our Gemstone Museum. All of this for just $69.95. Have a blast from the past and take home some amazing designs. For further information, contact our call centre on 0800 644 655. Jewelry Maker course gift vouchers are now available. You can choose from a bronze, silver or gold voucher. Each voucher is worth a different amount that entitles you to put towards a course of your choice. For more information, contact our call centre on 0800 644 655. If you miss a Jewelry Maker show, then simply go to our YouTube page where you'll be able to find hours of Jewelry Maker footage. Search by show, date or type. Alternatively, search by guest designer by using our playlist page. You can also find hours of tutorials with handy hints and tips to give you inspiration. Our YouTube page is updated on a daily basis, so you can access any show at any time. Stay in touch with Jewelry Maker. Join Gemma Crow and take your wire working to the next level by learning how to use our higher gauges of wire with ease. Develop new skills that will enable you to successfully manipulate, texture and shape your wire into strong, durable and beautiful jewellery. 
This course includes a selection of wire, 20 pieces of sterling silver flat head pins, a strand of large gemstones, use of all relevant tools, buffet-style lunch and refreshments, a tour of the studios, and a visit to our Gemporia Museum. For more information, contact our call centre on 0800 644 655. Jewelry Maker, bringing out the designer in you. Join the incredibly talented guest designer Alison Tarry in her very first wire sculpture DVD. In this edition, you will learn all the skills needed to create fabulous scroll work designs, including a decorative bell, wire booties, and an ornamental box. To get your hands on a copy, contact our call centre. Get creative with Jewelry Maker. Get involved with Jewelry Maker by sending the studio a message during our live hours. You can send a text to 60777 and start your message with JM Studio or, alternatively, go to our website and click on Watch the Live Show. Simply type your message into the box and press send. Make sure you stay tuned in case your message is read out. Get interactive with Jewelry Maker. Good afternoon and welcome back to the Designer Inspiration Show here on Jewelry Maker. My name's Ed. Thank you so much for tuning in. This afternoon we are extremely busy. I will say uh, most of the items we've brought to screen if I have been set up. There are a few remaining in stock of the previous kit, but uh, not too many. So if you've got it in your basket, you do need to check out. We are going to bring you our next kit of the day very, very soon. We're going to continue with uh, Gemma's fantastic designs because uh, everybody's loving her inspiration. So we're going to crack straight on. We're going to have a look at everything we've got in the next kit. Now this is the one that we've put the... Um, kind of the purpley patinas alongside uh, within Gemma's designs. Do you know what? This wire has been so popular so far today, hasn't it? This is the, uh, the softer copper wire. Every single opportunity that we've brought you to own this copper has been a sellout so far today. Gemma's already pointed out the value that we're offering you is a little bit ridiculous, uh, especially when you've got the two mil copper wire. Now, we don't see this gauge very often do we? So that's the, the ultimate in structural wire I guess. Yeah, it's my favourite to work with. It's your favourite? Yeah, I love the big chunky wires because you can treat it like a proper metal, you know, you can hammer it and bash it and texture it. <laughs> she just wants to like be destructive, doesn't she? Yes. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> um, so that's the two mil, you get five metres of that because of course it is the thicker gauge and then you've got the 0.4 mil and you get ten metres of that. And is that still the perfect sort of detailing wire alongside the two mil like um, it would be with the one or the 1.25? It's it's great for, um, 0.4 is always useful for having things to bind frameworks together and things like that. So that stitching and weaving yeah. work is always good for 0.4. Yeah, so yeah, they, they do work in combination fine. Great, okay, so you've got five metres of your two mil um, and you've got 10 metres of your 0.4 mil. You also get your wire mesh. Is this the, uh, the 2 mil, 1 mil? 3 mil, there you go. Typical. Uh, five yards of the three mil wire mesh. I love the colour tone. Lavender or lilac wire mesh there. You get five yards of that three millimetre in diameter. And then have a look at the gemstones. Gorgeous colour tones. Everyone's favourite colour, really, when we think about how popular the lights of amethyst is. And, you know, I don't think it's just because it's recognisable. I think it's because purple as a colour tone is so... Um, eclectic really, it's so versatile, it goes with so many other gemstones, any metallic tone, we, we're going to use it alongside the coppers, but purple and gold, classic combination, purple and silver, very elegant as well, so it always works, doesn't it? And goes with any skin tone, any hair colour, any outfit, can't go wrong. There's, the purple's for everyone. Purple's for everyone. It is, it's a universal one. And I didn't know this. Maybe because I come from a Scottish family, but apparently it's really funny to say purple in a Scottish accent. Someone was telling me the other day, purple, 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 purple. They're all laughing. I've never, I didn't know that. Uh, there you go. 
So you've got your, your clear quartz drums. So you've got a little bit of clarity there. 180 carats, 10 by 8 millimeters in size. Then you've got your lavender amethyst. These are in the puffy squares. Now, the interesting thing about these is they are corner drilled, so they're more like puffy diamonds, really, aren't they? Puffy squares. Um, and those are 10 millimeters in size, 130 carats. And then you've got these very, very large purple magnesite faceted slabs. They range in size from 25 by 30 to 36 by 49 millimeters in size, giving you over 500 carats. I mean, they're feature gemstones, aren't they? You could use them as the kind of focal point in design, whether that's going to be an asymmetrical piece or whether you want to make it a feature pendant. These are going to definitely fit the bill. In fact, you've even got some that are a little bit more of a a considered size, so imagine a kind of cocktail style ring. You like that, Gemma? Yeah, very, yeah. Definitely. I mean, I can't do any of this stuff, but I'm full of ideas. <laughs> so, <laughs> 550 carats of your purple magnetite. It's a really beautiful, rich, regal purple tone that you've got there, and alongside the lavenders of the amethyst and the clarity of the clear quartz really helps the magnetite to pop, actually, especially with that beautiful banding there. I was seeing that the banding on magnesite, that kind of matrix effect, is very similar to the banding you see on like natural turquoise. That's what is reminiscent of for me. Well, yeah, but it is. It looks a lot like turquoise. In fact, it's, before it's died, it's often known as white turquoise. It's yeah, been and actually, that. this is one of the sort of industry problems with turquoise because you know unscrupulous characters will yes. dye the uh, sort of the raw material of magnesite and turquoise colour and call it turquoise for that reason yeah, actually now I think about it so it's not an uncommon uncommon thought. Thirty eight seventy should be the price if you were to buy all of these items individually. But uh, we're not staying there. We're gonna take it down to a design and inspiration price. Cash back. Twenty seven ninety five um, so yeah, should be over £38, taking it down to twenty-seven ninety-five. so over £10 back in your pocket. That can't be bad for all of that, can it? Well, no, and it goes on and on and on and on. I can't get everything out on this desk. I actually. just noticed you struggling <laughs> to get your display on yeah. the desk. It goes such a long way. And is that because you've got the very sizeable gemstones that give you a feature for all of the designs, isn't it? It's a combination of that, yeah, and those. And I've used those quite heavily in some pieces, but it's the structured wire, because it, it is an element in its own right, so, you know, it makes up a massive proportion right. of the jewellery. So that 2 mil wire becomes a feature of the designs. It's not mm. just uh, sort of hidden away as no. the, uh, the mechanics, if you like. It becomes a feature. Yeah. I mean, you can imagine almost creating a bezel setting for these, or, or is that something you've done? No, I haven't, no, I haven't. Okay. You could flatten it out, yeah. With, yeah um, you could hammer it flat, or if you're lucky enough to have a mill, you could mill it flat. You could mill it, yeah, and yeah. then you could just set it around this. Yeah. Oh. Was that, did that come down from the powers that be, or are you just, you are the powers that be, so Phil's decided it's he's going to hand head. you back your P&P as well. <laughs> he's winging it. Ooh. It's the last day of the weekend. We're not in tomorrow. So he's decided he's going to hand you back your P&P. &P. Gemma actually looked perturbed then when she saw it go down to 24 hours. She looked at her ridiculous array of jewellery over there and she was like, hold on a minute, 24.95? Yes, £2.49 a piece. There really, go. have you done 10 pieces of jewellery out of that kit? I think so. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, yeah. Yes. I yeah. assume none of those would sell for two pounds fifty. No, definitely <laughs> not. No, they wouldn't, Edward. Uh, Twenty-four ninety-five for everything you get in there. I mean, I have actually seen the price for this uh, soft copper wire from other suppliers, and it can be quite pricey from certain suppliers, can't it? Oh yeah, yeah. To get that as part of this kit, I mean, I think at thirty-eight. 70, I think it was thirty-eight seventy should be the price point you pay. That's already incredible value we already decided we we're going to take it down to 27.95 just to give you a deal today but Phil's gone one step further and handed you back the equipment of your PMP we're now down at 24.95 amazing okay people are starting to come through for this one again we've got people multi buying the kit it might just be because people want to get hold of that incredible wire 
and um, shall I come over and see what you've created, Gemma, or shall I bring everybody the opportunity to add the blanks as well? Shall I bring the blanks with me? Bring the blanks okay. with you, yeah. Right, I'm putting, I've okay. just emptied a packet of um, these Your Tim Hots. Yeah, and then realised I should keep them in so you can see them before I, before I do it. So oh, I'm putting them back. Don't you just destroy the display, did you? Yeah, I'm putting That's them back and then I can show this you. Country. Um, <laughs> Normally, I don't really get engulfed by the jewellery because I'm larger than a lot of the designers, but even I am getting a little bit lost <laughs> amongst all of this jewellery. Look at this array of busts, because the interesting thing about it is not only have we got so many different designs, they're all on the big bus because they're all feature designs, yeah. they're kind of opera length yeah. necklaces, aren't they? Yeah. Gorgeous. Oh, so this is what you're talking about, yeah. the wire becoming a feature. So that's quite a um, kind of designer style effect that you've got there, isn't it? Yeah, that's it. It's high impact, isn't it? But it's really simple, really so, simple to do. It's kind of one of the, the designs that would be uh, adopted by fashion style jewellery once it had been used by you know, you know, high end jewellery designs, yeah. isn't it? So it's everywhere, really, yeah. that kind of look, isn't it? Gorgeous. I love this piece. This one's the real kind of showcase yeah. style design isn't it? And this is the one we're gonna, I'm going to take you through oh, okay, cool. today so it's got a bit of everything in there. This has got the um, the little philosophy, what are they called Tip, again? Like Findings? Is that Muse what tokens. Muse tokens? Yeah. Is that because they're tokens. supposed to inspire you that they're muse tokens do you think? Yeah. yeah. They've just got some really lovely words on you know make great little gifts and tags for charms and it's sentimental, which yeah. is always good. Is it, and also, I suppose, I because you've got so, because <laughs> you've got so many different, you probably covered quite a lot of initials in there. As yeah. Well. I know that the, I know that the letter is supposed to um, determine the the phraseology on it, but the, you know, yeah, you but could you have can dual yeah. meaning that yeah, way. Yeah, there's it? loads of words you there's can make There's a nice up. e in there you could use for your favourite TV presenter. Yes, you could. Eamon Holmes. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> right. How about this one? This is gorgeous. This is a bit more of a classic look, isn't it, I suppose? Yeah. But you've still simple. integrated little bits of detailing in there. Yeah. And uh, is, am I right in thinking you've patinaed that little leaf? Is that I right? haven't. Actually, I've That's sanded it. That's just my it. eye. No, no. Oh, no, you have I've sanded finish, it. Yeah. So it is, there is something different about it from when it came out of the pack. I've sanded it and it gives sort of a pewtery look. Once you sand it oh, down. we have got the little sanding disc yes. coming up later in the show, so don't panic. We've got everything for you. Um, the other great thing about this, we didn't discuss this at much length because we've been focusing on the more kind of gem-heavy piece of the uh, of the, um, the different designs. But on the neckline here, mm. the wire mesh, gorgeous way to yeah. complete the design, isn't it? It's also on these designs. You can see this where the wire mesh is actually used on the neckline. Almost in place of your, your traditional beaming thread or your chain, for example, yeah. it looks gorgeous, doesn't it? Yeah, I think it's I think it's ideal for that actually. Um, before we had this narrower mesh, I used to pull the our yeah, other I mesh so. through the coils to make cords because they just make such a good finish right. on wire work because you don't necessarily want to add a chain into wire work because it, yeah. it's not quite right. No, I know but, what you, you mean. Know, yeah, unless you hand make your own chain. Never quite feel quite feels right, but these are great, great way of adding colour and another texture, and they're comfortable on your skin as well. Yeah, they look comfortable. They are the really thing, yeah. comfortable. Yeah, gorgeous. Uh, so a huge array of jewellery here. We better get this one back on screen because it's got Gemma's lovely name on it. So you you went yeah. So that, oh yeah, you you had been my muse already. You'd already <laughs> inspired that idea, hadn't you? Yeah. There's also um, a bookmark on the end there, which yeah. um, I'm thinking. This, these are going to be great for end of term presents for teachers. teachers absolutely the little fantastic. words, you know, it's it's nice. It's sentimental, really easy to do, as well. So that's great, actually, because uh, also those kind of um, kind of more alternative, quirky designs tend to be some of the biggest sellers at craft yeah. fairs, don't they? Yeah, and everybody loves something with a bit of sentiment because it says you've thought about the gift or definitely, you know, it's telling a message or a story. You might not want a love heart, you know. A lot of people don't want love necessarily want love hearts and stars. This is great because it's. Not, it's a bit more yeah, it's a, it's generic. A bit more, yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> there's so much jewellery. There's no way for me to no, no, I'm sorry. But <laughs> I 
I have managed to uh, just get the blanks through there on screen. There you go. So these are the blanks that we've seen in the previous kit being used to be uh, patinaed with. Mm -hmm. And we've got them in this kit, have we? Oh, yeah. yes, the, the gem that yeah. we just looked at. And their back backings. They, they, they've, they've actually made nice backings for my um, Muse tokens to really pop, pop out on top Great. of them. And, of course, if you are interested in doing this kind of meta work, you need to stock up on your blanks anyway, don't you? So it's always yep. useful to have. Um, blankety blank. Very good. Great photography work there. You can actually see the reflection of the camera in there, but that just goes to show the, the high sheen finish that you get on there. So you get 15, 20 millimetre copper plated stamping blanks. Have a look at this ridiculous price point. It's the only way to describe it. You're going to get 15 for £10. It's amazing value. That's what we do here at Jewelry Maker. Everything you're going to get, you can see there, 9 95 for all 15 Um How many of these did we have? I thought so. Yeah, we only had double figures of availability to start with, and I don't mean 99 by the way, <laughs> so we had just over 50 available, they're already flying out the door as you can imagine, these have become um, really sort of the, I suppose the little, the, the, the canvas or the backdrop to a lot of the detailing within your designs haven't yeah. they? Yeah they have because they're so shiny, I mean I've painted, I've used the patinas on them as well in areas but I actually really love the sheen um, coming from them because they sort of shone through. So I use them mainly as they are. I just punch some holes see, in them. See, in the backing there. Yeah. If I show you, there you go. So they have really become the kind of backdrop of of the the feature within the design. That's yeah. what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Get there in the end, right? <laughs> <laughs> Gorgeous. Okay, 15 of those for 9.95. Uh, I've got roughly. 20 of those remaining in stock. So if you want to grab those, you need to act very, very quickly. Huge number of people multi-buying those. So Anne's got two, and Patricia's got two, Michelle's got two, and Laura's got two. Amazing, 9.95. Uh, and we're now going to give you the chance to uh, grab the little Muse tokens. Oh, oh I'm sorry. <laughs> it's my fault because you warned me and I still managed to mess it up. Oh, it doesn't matter. Um, okay. Oh, really? Which one? Oh, you've got oh, some. Do you know what? I've got some. Oh. I thought that was the only one because... Not with it today, Jen. Let me <laughs> off. All right. I've got some Muse tokens. Here we go. And we're also throwing in some 0.4mm wire. The stickers all over it. 10 metres of 0.4mm. It's the antique bronze wire. I'll hold it sideways. We're just way too professional these days. We've got all packaging and branding on everything. <laughs> it wasn't like this in my day. <laughs> Seven ninety-five. Is that all they are? Wow. For, and you get the wire as well. I would. I would have put these at, at least ten pounds on their own. These. The, the actual yeah. little tokens you would have thought would have been ten pounds. Uh, just to be clear, can I read the things out? You've got genuine with a G, courageous, and then obviously the C. I'm not going to do that every time. Wonderful, excellence, journey, forevermore, lifetime, knowledge, thoughts, moments, unique, significant. There you go. Claire's just texting to say, this is Claire from Bristol, to say, OMG, if I could dibs just one of those amazing pieces, Gemma, I would not be able to choose. Have, have my kit, will be attempting uh, to create something amazing. Good, you will be able to. It's, they're re it's all simple techniques because the components do it for you, really, because they're, you know, they're really lovely pieces. Hazel's text in as well. I think uh, Hazel's a regular contributor to Jewelry Maker. Here. Oh, it's a. Yes. Hazel, you stitched me right up. It's not that long left. <laughs> uh, six five to Gemma. Okay, there is a designer, Lador. I adore. I adore. <sighs> Stop. He loves getting down on the floor. Painkillers. Okay. <laughs> okay. Where's this going? There is a designer I adore who loves getting down on the floor. Gemma Crow is her name. Street dance is her game, but she loves to make jewellery more. <laughs> That's brilliant. I love that one. I love one. that one That's too. That's great. Yeah, I'm having that one. Uh, and just right on cue, <laughs> as we start talking about street dancing, our resident street dancer, 
Pez is here. <laughs> Hi, Claire. It's distracting me now. The room's full of beautiful women. Okay. Are we going to continue now and start with the demonstration? Here we go. Okay. Right, so I'm going to start by doing some painting because then that can dry whilst we do the next stages. Good idea. Um, and I can show you how to, how to build up the colours. Now, if you got the patinas earlier, this one, this time I've used the pack with the ruby, opalite and cobalt blue. And I've used a mixture of the colours. Oh. You need to shake them. You can hear the little mixer ball inside. So you give them a good shake because they do tend to settle. And what was really good about these um, these um, charms was that they come in these little packets, which are ideal um, ah, ideal palette. Yes, this so basically gives you a little painter's palette, palette. Yeah. and you get two because they're oh. sandwiched. Of course, so it's perfect. Right, so I've given them a good shake, and one tip as well I find is if you tip them straight upside down and try and squeeze, the the, the mixer ball sits in the nozzle and you don't get any paint out. So you just tip them at an angle and then you can squeeze your paint out. So I'm just going to squeeze um, a bit of blue into this one. I've got more, much more than I need here I think. And I'm going to tip some purple in as well. And um, some of my pinky, well ruby this one's called. Literally, I just walked past there to put my tea ring in the vein. Ten seconds earlier, and I would have been covered in patina paint. What would what would happen if you got patina paint all over your shirt? It's water based. I'll get it out so straight away. Wash out. There you go. Thanks. I'll get to work on that, shall I? Yes. <gasps> oh no! I've put that right into the wood. Just need some water. Yeah, we'll need some water. Oh. Have baby wipes handy. We, any, we should have baby wipes in the studio. Ready? <sighs> yeah, when you're here, we should. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> oh, goodness. Oh, See, don't I, worry about it. I yeah. brought a towel in and everything so I didn't mess up the nice, clean, new mat that we've got here. Because the last time I did any painting, I got the mat covered in paint. We're a craft yeah, channel. Messy. These things happen. Right, okay, so let's choose what term. Um, should we do luck again? Yeah. Uh, okay. Lots of combinations of words you can find. Oh, you that's what I'm going to be thinking now. I've got some, it's okay. Right, okay. So I'm going to put the colour on. I'm going to use, I've just cut up some kitchen sponges just into little squares so that I can use them like this. And I'm going to mix, um, I want a purpley colour, so I'm going to mix my blue and my light purple just in the same sponge like that. And sponge, sponge it on. You see how quick it actually is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to graduate the colour slightly. So again, grab my blue and my purple, splodge it on. Like that. And then I'm going to take uh, my pinky colour and put that more at the top and bring it down. So the top of the charm, I'm just dab it so that it's coming down don't have to be too careful because you can always go back in and take some off or pop some more on. Okay, so there's, see so yeah, how that's sort of gradually, it's helping to graduate. They mix really well in together. And so, my colours, and then I'm going to take the lighter one, the lighter this um, opalite on its own. I'm going to dab a bit of the paint off because I sort of want a dry, more of a dry texture now. And this is what's nice about it is you, you can really do all the different paint effects that you're used to with other crafts with these, but you can do it onto the metal, which is brilliant. So you can see I'm just taking a lighter colour and just picking out the, the top sections just so that I've got just a bit of interest and in graduating that colour there. Love it. Okay, so there's our painting done. What we'll do, it takes a couple of minutes to dry, that's all. I'm just going to pop this to the side while we do the next bits, and then we'll come and take some of that um, patina off to reveal the metal underneath in a mo. Look at that over there. Okay, well, in there, <coughs> while we're doing that, 
Should oh, we do yeah. this uh, sheet of, of that cover? Yeah. Because you could apply this to all of these, couldn't you? And you could do your own sort of, you could actually make your own little... Make your own discs and discs squares, yeah. Were, whatever they're called. Yeah. Use tokens. Yeah, and they go in our disc cutters that we've got as well, our punch blocks. So oh, okay, there you go. So perfect. So we've got the bare copper sheets here. Put three of them together to give you an incredible deal, just like we did with the previous bundle. We brought, put the Muse tokens with wire for 7 95 Now we're giving you three copper sheets. Should be 14 85 Already less than £5 a sheet. And I'm sure anybody who's had to buy sort of uh, the copper sheets from other suppliers will know that's already amazing value. How about less than £10 for all three, Jen? If that is brilliant, brilliant, brilliant value. Yeah. I used to pay, um, I used to buy scrap metal by the kilo, so I'd get a scrap of copper and a yeah. scrap of tin and um, all sorts of different metals. I used to pay £10 a kilo, but then I'd pay £10 postage and I'd only get little scraps. Really? So, you and know, then sort of you, you've got like work to do then, I suppose. Yeah, I mean, there's a whole bangle if you just cut a length, you've got, yeah. got a whole cuff. Job's done for Perfect you because size, this is. Yeah. You know, pretty much ready made to work with yeah. as opposed to having to kind of source it in those obscure ways yeah. if you like and you've got two thicknesses as well have you yeah you've got a one mil and a point five mil of you it looks like it oh uh, right. are the details fail Two different thicknesses on these copper, or are they all the same? No, they're all the oh, same, they're the same. Yeah, it's just our eyes playing tricks with us in the studio, I think. Mm. Yeah, too, but yeah, they're all the same thickness, I believe. We've just we've just created a, a treble trouble deal. Half the stocks are already allocated, and um, I will tell you that there are probably about 30, 40 people that in their baskets as well. So you do need to check out as quickly as possible on that deal. Should be a uh, well should be less than five pound a sheet at the best of times but we've just taken three of them down to 9.95 so that works out at three pound 32 per sheet now oh, and don't forget that's all part of your one collective pmp so it doesn't matter that you're buying sort of heavy sheets no. of metal you still only pay 2.95 right up until midnight this evening um sorry Gemma, to keep interrupting you today it's fine we need to get the deals out don't we Right, I've got the 2 mil wire coming off the reel here and you can see how soft it is, even though it's 2 mil, and you might worry about that, but you honestly don't have to, it is so soft this and is malleable. It's your favourite wire, isn't it? Yeah. And you pull it, I pull it through my hands to get it smooth and smoothed out, and it does smooth really easily. Now, obviously I'm used to working with wire and higher gauges, so my hands are, you know, I've become accustomed to it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> They've actually got permanent ridges in where the wire flows through, but... Um, you can get this, you don't have to be um, really strong to do this, you just, whereas I might do this twice and get the result, you might want to do that five times with less pressure, so it is, it's either being repetitive or being firm, it's up to you, okay, but you will, you will be able to straighten out with your hands, no problem. Okay, so just get it straightened out um, as, much as, as much as you're happy with, um, and that will warm it up and get it all neat for you. And I'm going to make some circles. So what I'm actually going to work you through here is making these um, like sections for the for a necklace, and then you can use them in whatever design you want. Okay, so we're going to um, create the rings first. Now at home, I used um, just a pot from you know the mesh pots that we've got. Yes. To create these discs, and they were the perfect size. But just to show you how to do them. Basically, keep your wire on your reel. I'm going to use this as my mandrel. I'm just going to let that drop down there. Um, hold, don't try and hold onto the tip of the wire because that will hurt your fingers. So hold it, give yourself a good tail, that gives you leverage. And then turn, <coughs> holding your thumb onto the, onto the pot or the mandrel that you're using, and just pull, and just turn, either turn your wrist or pull the wire around, whichever is easiest for you. And you see how easily that is forming and I'm really not putting much strength into that at all it's just allowing them to sit around and you're basically making giant jump rings okay so there you go there's your coil and then you cut them um, just as you would cut in jump rings um, if you want to get them to close flush I'll show you how to do that now it cuts really easily with the flush cutter 
um, pliers that we've got and the bead long ones it doesn't cut I'm not going to be fair but it doesn't cut quite so easily with your kit cutters right, okay. um, it does uh, cut but it's not as easy okay. so I would recommend getting yourself some of these everyone's favorite tool yeah. isn't it really yeah I mean if you haven't then maybe use um, your um, toolbox tools to cut to, you know yeah. to make so it easy get, for yourself um, the pliers out of your actual tool some, kit as yeah. opposed to using the ones out of your smaller tool yeah. making toolkit. something a bit more heavy duty just to make it easier for your on on you really and then you can always file the ends down to get a neat finish because obviously big bulky tools aren't great for getting a neat finish but they will cut they will it cut through it. yeah yeah so I'm gonna cut um, my first cut just to get me into my rings and then I'm just gonna separate that out slightly because if you can see on this side it's nice and flat where I've made the cut mm -hmm. on the side that's been um, come off it's pointed yeah. and that's you know that's what happens with the pliers so I want two flat ends to fit together so what I'm gonna do is turn my work and create another cut just here so that one it's right. cut this is going to be two flat edges that can sit together so, so by turning it 180 degrees you're going to get two flat finishes that will sit flush yeah on so one they sit nicely together and shut like so okay. like a big jump ring like a big jump ring that's it and then um then you do have to trim that one back off so that you because that one's pointy yeah because that'll be pointy then yeah, yeah. so, so that little trim, make sure you flat finish on that flat finish on that and you keep going and you make as many of those as you like okay okay Sense. yeah so I'll just do a couple more and then go in there you go and we're ready so that's I get some of those made big enough and I've used um, mandrel at home which is the mesh and um, if you've got the multi mandrel this is the biggest circle on that as well so you could use that too okay are you doing that? Are you about to use it? Because I can use that next, yeah. Okay then, well <laughs> that seems like a perfect time. I was holding it in anticipation of you going to use it. Yeah, I'm going to use that now. We're going to bring you the hole punch. Now again, for anybody who's interested in these kind of techniques, this is like an essential tool, isn't mm. it? Is this one of your yeah. favourites? Yeah, I wouldn't be without mine. And yeah, actually, I haven't done it today, but you can flatten this 0.25 wire and use that on the wire. Ah, actually, really? draw holes in the wire, yeah. Uh, oh, it's that's amazing. I've never heard that before. Mm. So because you've got, well, I don't think I've ever seen that large gauge wire before, actually. So you can flatten it, and then you can actually create holes in it. Yeah. Amazing. With the finer end. That would work for those uh, bezel settings I was talking about, because if you've made the hole, you could actually yes. wire wrap it together. and then Good like plan. On it. <laughs> so uh, this gives you the 0.6 mil and the 0.24 mil little holes. I mean... Anybody who's interested in metal stamping or patinering, anything that involves these kind of, uh, well, the sheet metal in any yeah. respect, you're going to need your hole punch, definitely. Yeah. Uh, under £10, 8 95 It has been available in the past, but, you know, maybe Gemma's inspired you today. I know that lots of people are texting in to say they've been inspired. We've had lots of new customers this weekend, you know, Gemma. Yeah, I heard that as yeah. well. That's nice. That's good to know. Yeah, lots of people feeling inspired. So there you go. Uh, if you want to get a hold of your hole punch, available right now. Another added to your order price. Make the most of that one PMP per day. Just eight ninety-five. Right, I'm going to show you, show you how to use it now. Show you how to use it. Yeah, it goes cuts through metal like butter. Honestly, it is so easy, and it just it goes just through it turn. like butter, doesn't it? It really does. It's really simple. So what I'm going to do is um, let me pinch another one of these. This is one I haven't painted yet. But what I want to do is I want this to sit on top of um, this little disc, my little charms to sit on top, and I want a hole at the top for it to go through, and I want a hole at the bottom to help anchor it to my frame. So I'm going to make one each side. So if I were you, it might be, I'm going to do it, I don't know if I've got anything scratchy. All right, there's no need to smash the place up, Gemma. Come on. <laughs> Oh, no. I know you're, you know, uh, throwing paint character. around, and I'm not doing very well today, am I? You already, tried to, you already tried to splash me with the paint. I know what a real fit was. Oh. Trying to make me have to take my shirt off. <laughs> I was going to say like a branded drink advert then, but I better not. Right. I don't want you. Okay, so I'm going to make a little. 
a little scratch here. You can use a pen just to make a mark. That's where I want my first hole to go. And then at the bottom, I want one here so that I've got two anchor points. Cool. Okay, so um, that will help when you pop this in here. Now, um, I'm going to try and use the camera as to see where I'm going. So you pop your, um, your blank in here. I'm using the finer of the two holes. And what's really nice is that these have got a mirror finish, so you can actually see where the punch is actually ah, lining yes. up. On the, it's actually that, really we, easy to the, see. And we can see the reflection yeah. of the camera in yeah. the image that we had. Yeah. So just line it up inside that little gap there, and you literally turn turn the handle. There was and anything to our photographer's madness then. Right. So what I do is I get it just clamped down so that it's almost not, but it's not pressing. It's just slightly clamped down and then I'll reposition to make sure it's definitely in the right place. So I'm just going to go there. So now I know it's in, I did know it was in the right place. Um, here we go. So now it's in the right place and then all I'm going to do is literally turn the handle and you do, I don't know if you even saw that, it just went through then so easy and then turn it back and you've got a perfect little hole in your in your metal. That's just perfect. Okay, and then we do the same on the other side. So I'm going to pop that. And which um, sort of side are you using at the moment? I'm using the narrower side at the this moment. This is the 1.6. Yep. Yeah. So pop that. Oh yeah, so that's pretty clear on the actual hole plan. It's actually this one, yeah. Well done, this, Ed. The newer one um, has got this printed on. The older ones that we had didn't have it on, so it's useful to have that. Because sometimes it's not quite clear by eye, you're not entirely sure. Okay, so pop it, and you just see now as I twist it, you'll see a little give. So a bit firmer, I'm pressing a bit firmer, and then all of a sudden, that's it, it's gone through. It's really, really simple, and much quicker than getting your drill out. So easy to have on your workbench. I mean, you know, the, the, the Dremels are fantastic, but oh. for something like this, if you're just doing one or two seconds, components, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, it's ideal. Well, you know, sometimes if you've got the you know, children around, you don't necessarily yeah, want to get your get drills out. Yeah, no, so. I totally understand. So you know, okay, so that's that one ready. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to texture these little loops that I've made just to because just because I can really. Jenna and I both get excited about smacking things. Smacking. <laughs> this is good it takes out your kind of like frustrations doesn't it Jenna? It does it does I think we've got the hammer and block in the show today so if you haven't got it it's a good time to get it. Um, I've you've got the if you're lucky enough to have the multi head hammer you can put any texture into this wire. Now, um, I say that because I've told people before not to use um, some of the more, more uh, some of the deeper textures on right. narrower wire. This one and the sheet, you can use any of your textures because it's right. tough enough. Right. Okay. Cool. Okay. Don't talk to me about that hammer anyway. You tried to kill me. <laughs> What a staple on the packaging stuck in my stuff. Oh no. Um, I, I think it's my first designer inspiration show. Ouch. Anyway, that was my own stupidity. I've just been told. No, it's not your. It's not. It's not the hammer's fault that you <laughs> stabbed yourself. True. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to hammer this now. Hammering a closed jump ring um, can be a bit tricky because as you hammer, it, obviously the metal stretches out and spreads out. So what we want to do is still try and keep our shape. So that's a case of um, hammering evenly and also holding it in place. So I always advise to keep your fingers off of the block if you can. So I'm going to hold mine on the corner of the block and I'm going to pinch either side therefore keeping that pinch the two edges pinched together and also keeping my fingers off the block as much as I can and we're just going to first use the, just the flat side of the hammer just to give us a bigger surface area to work onto and then just keep turning your piece and pinching the frame together so that you're trying to keep that shape so I'm pinching either side hammering it flat okay so if you've hammered quite evenly all the way round you might your your um, jump ring may open slightly 
You can see it's opened um, slightly there, but, but actually it's kept its shape really well, so that's good. So now we're going to pop some texture in. For this, this um, I'm going to use the um, ball pine end of the hammer, again holding the, the ring together and just tapping all the way around. Now I often say to people, don't try and be perfect with where your hammer falls. You're going to miss, you can see by my dimpled surface on, on this block, you're going to miss maybe four times and hit the wire once, okay? okay. But that's fine because it means that you're not going to, when you're using even pressure, yep. um, and two, um, you're going to get a random pattern. If you're too precise, like this, yeah, when you don't get... you the texture. No, you don't get, you don't get as much um, depth in your texture and also okay. it also becomes too even. It looks more like a yeah. facet. Yeah, it's like, it's so kind of defeats the whole point of it. Yeah. If you want to do something that look like that, we brought you the uh, the very fine detailing hammers yes. on Friday with Laura. They're yeah. perfect for that kind of thing, aren't yeah. they? If you want that kind of faceted look, yeah. but if you want a textured finish, then this is what you can achieve. Yeah. Uh, actually, you can grab the hammer block and anvil right now. And don't forget, Brilliant. if you've bought sort of sheets of copper and a hammer and a big block of... Um, it is a steel block, yeah, so you've got a big block of steel here. Still only paying one PMP per day. People who have been involved in, you know, these kind of techniques for years and years will honestly tell you that is unbelievable because, you know, when I speak to, like, Debbie Kershaw, for example, she tells me yeah. she's paid more in posting packaging than we charge for the actual product. Absolutely, and I have as well. Yeah, yeah. there you go. Yeah, definitely. So, uh, 19 85 Oh, that's not the price. Oh, okay. Nice hammer. I've not had this you one. like that one? Yeah. <laughs> it's the beech wood handle. It's lovely. Nice hammer. Nice hammer. <laughs> it How is. cool is Gemma? That is a nice hammer. Any blades who are watching now <laughs> are thinking like, oh yeah, I want this to be impressed by yeah. my hammer. Yeah, it's a good 12 hammer. Twelve ninety five for the hammer, the steel block, and the anvil. Of course, uh, great <laughs> clamping everything in place so you don't. It is. Uh, and that's it's great for working with your sheet copper because it's also a bench block. Oh, so of course, it's actually, because of the way it fits it, in. Yeah, you, you work onto that so you can saw and you saw a little notch in the end and you can get really nice Perfect. detail. Perfect. There you go. So it should be 1985. That's already an incredible price point. We'll just take it down to 1295. Wow. And in the words of my good friend Jim McGrow, nice hammer. That is a remarkable price, it really is. I paid £20 for my first anvil. Really? Which is, which is the little tiny one. Oh, and then I, know I paid the ones. I've seen them. Probably, yeah. I think it was around £8 to £10 postage. So, you know, I'm talking £30 so just yeah. for an anvil. Twelve ninety five. you've got the large anvil, mm -hmm. the steel block, and the hammer. I mean, seriously, if you were to buy a steel block from another supplier, can you imagine the postage they charge you? Because, you I know, did, yeah. they'd, they'd want to weigh it, basically, wouldn't they? Yeah, I ordered, for my workshops, I ordered ten. And when it came, it was so heavy, I felt really sorry for the delivery driver. But, you know, well, I still paid two ninety five. Two ninety five, <laughs> And you've ordered, you've ordered ten steel blocks? Yeah. Well, yeah. That ten is, steel blocks, ten hammers. That starts to sort of really highlight the value yes, of the one P&P per day, doesn't it? Really it really does. There's some places you pay per kilo, and that, you know, that would easily live in 20 kilos. So, okay, yeah. well, while we're, uh, you know, at this juncture where we can get items on screen and people are flying in for the hammer, of course they are, we might as well bring you the sandpapers, because we were talking about these earlier on, weren't yeah. we? And people are going to need these as well if they're working with their sheet metal. So you get three of the uh, small pieces and one of the large piece, that's what I believe. Uh, the, uh, the smaller sandpapers, is this right? Are they all, they're all the same gauge are they but you get three of the fine ones we've got super fine and fine so we got um right so when got that's sort of to start you off um so they do vary one, yeah, so you've got three of super fine one uh, of the larger finer ones is that right yeah, yeah. okay cool we are going to give you so that he's just phil's just admiring the name of his bundle rough with the smooth all right a bit like that in the studio, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> they, they said it's like me and you. Yes. Yeah, because I'm pretty smooth. Um, <laughs> and I'm rough. <laughs> as if we know the rough one is all rough. Let's say a no, Ed. 
<laughs> in your dreams, son. <laughs> yeah, I know. Okay, let's do it. Six ninety-five for your sandpaper bundle. Amazing. Add it to your order prices all day long. You like that, yeah, Jen? Yeah, it is a good price. It is very good, actually. Because they go a long way. They last a long time as well. Oh, okay. There you go. So, grab my you can. Right. Oh, that's nearly sold out already. Wow. So, I am going to finish texturing this sure. uh, now. And I'm being naughty and putting my fingers on the block. Can I, can I just say, Jen? Yes. Nice hammer. Nice hammer. It's not as nice as that hammer. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Gemma is genuinely impressed by that hammer. It's yeah, pretty nice. It is a really nice hammer. It's really good. <laughs> oh dear. Oh, hold well on, I right. Okay. That's <laughs> what you're passionate about. This is your passion, creating beautiful jewellery. Why well, you, you? You know, it's an integral tool in your work. <laughs> okay, so you can see how this is coming together now. I've got my disc, yep. I've got my jump ring, and I've got one of my charms and I'm going to sl slot those together, wire them together and they're going to become components in my design. Okay, cool. Okay, so let's take this out of the way and I think we should be ready now to use the sandpaper on our charms. They should be dry. Yep, it's perfectly dry. So, um, well, just be warned actually, word of warning, sometimes when you've sponged you get a little collection of paint around the edge. Right. So before I put it onto this white backing, I'm just going to, I'm just going to check. Yeah, that's all right. <laughs> but oh, is this is this like a little thing amongst the sons? Have we got a new macrame board today? Have we well, it's always me that messes it up. I either cut my finger and bleed on it, or I put paint on it, or I cover it in metal filings, or yeah. This time I didn't want it to be me. That so you just up. thought that you would uh, <laughs> cover the entire desk with paint instead? Did you? <laughs> At least I missed the mat. I think that was the main well, thing. That was, that was your aim. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> okay, so I'm using the super fine, um, which is that one, yeah, that which one, is yeah. what we've just That's one of the little ones that you. are still available on screen okay. at 6 95 although I am being told that these are selling out very, very quickly. Yeah, well, they are. You know, they, they don't come up very often. They oh. last, you know, and you do need them. You can use them for your polymer, for your silver clay, for your, you know all sorts, anything oh, yeah, that you want to get a nice yeah. finish, because it's wet and dry as well. We've so. brought both of those disciplines to you this week on the Design Inspiration Show. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is, as I, you can see the colour, I've graduated it nicely, it's dried nicely, it's got a lovely sheen actually, these, these colours. Um, so what I'm going to do now is just going to rub the, the sponge over the top, and I want to keep it nice and flat, because um, I don't want to go right into the depths of it. I just want to pick out the raised areas. Mm -hmm. So you, um, I'm going to have to put it on here. So we just rub across. Can you see that coming? You see, we're just taking off the raised paint. Um, in circles might help. Sometimes it depends what area you're doing. You just find that. So rubbing circle. So can you see that's picked picked that out now you can see it. So if you compare it to that one, you can see that's really picked out that writing. So I'm gonna just do that all the way around so I'm picking out the detail. Okay, so there you go. Um let me just choose a different colour. Ah. So this is the um, more antique bronzy colour of the charms and then this is the more um, coppery tone of the charms so when I take the um, when I take the colour off of this one you'll see a much more coppery colour coming through you can see how robust the paint is I'm having to yeah, work quite hard to take like it off Giving it some welly and it, yeah. it's not affecting the paint at all. No, this is it. I mean, we we do want to be able to take some of it off because that's you know that's what gives us that differentiation. Actually, makes it worth applying a colour is when you can take off and highlight certain areas. Well, for me anyway. Um, but you can see how um, sturdy it is because it doesn't doesn't come off easily. Then 
you wouldn't just rub that off with your fingers or it's not going to come off in your clothing. I think that's what the things you want to worry about when you're making jewellery, using paints in jewellery. So there you go, and that, I, I love the coppery ones. So there's the two different colours there. Gorgeous. Okay, and you see they the... I just really picked out the detail if we compare it to that. That one. It's nice, isn't it? Okay, so let's stitch them all together. Right, so now we've got our blank. Now if I pop that on top of the blank, I just really like how it gives you that reflection through through the blank. You can see it shining there. So I'm going to line the hole up on that blank and take the um, finer gauge wire that I got in this one, which is the 0 0.4. This is what I had left, by the way, this, um, this section here of wire. So you can see how far it went. So I'm going to take a, a, a length off and I'm going to get about 30 centimetres, what's that, 15 inches, 14 inches-ish. And I'm going to first start, I'm going to take my um, piece, I'm just going to check whether I left the loop at the top or not. No, I didn't. So I'm going to start roughly central onto my wires. I'm going to leave a tail of half of my wire off one side because I need it even on both sides once I've done my wrapping. And I'm going to wrap just before, so here's the, the opening in my, in my jump ring. So I'm going to start wrapping just to the side of that for now. And I'm going to wrap, it doesn't matter how many times actually, but as long as you keep it the same every time. So let's say we do this five Let's say six. I knew you were going to say that. What? Well, five you're or six. Do it five times. Well, five. Sign is always say five or seven. They in do, my yeah. experience. I'm going to take it to seven now that you said that because <laughs> I did six. There you go. Good. I've, in, I've influenced the design in some way. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to. I've done that and I've brought it. I didn't want. I don't want to be wrapping over there because over the, um, the opening joint. because yeah. what I'll do is I'll just pull the wire straight through. So what I'm going to do now is slide it over the join ah, only slightly but hopefully when I do the next one I do the next one much more gentle I'll just bridge that gap without giving me too much too much um, problem yeah and it's not hiding okay so you just do be a bit delicate with it at this stage now bring my wire up through I'm gonna bring pop on my blank copper blank and my charm or token and just then put the wire up through and just position it so that it's just at the top and then back through all of them I think you get about three stitches into this hole three or four stitches in through the holes on the tags there and, and give them a give them a squash so that you get them even Okay, I'm going to go through three times. And okay, so I've got three times up through there. That's keeping that nice and secure. And then remember to do the same amount of wraps along on the other side to make it just all symmetrical. So, I mean, did I do seven? People are texting in to agree with you that it is a very nice hammer. Yes. <laughs> Michelle has texted in to say Thank that she you grabbed a hammer side. yesterday and she agrees with you. Nice hammer. Nice hammer, yeah. It is a nice hammer. And uh, Hazel's texted in to say, it's as if I talk all the time and finish, each uh, and finish each sentence in rhyme. So this is for you, the gallery crew. You're amazing and doing just fine. Oh, well done. That's one to the crew. <laughs> That is a good one, actually. Okay, so I've got all the... 0.33, Phil. Matt's gate taking a share of that as well. Oh, yeah, true. 0.5. The half in their points in there. Yeah, we get all our own. 
Okay, we did get a half each, though. I just gave us both one for that. No. <laughs> I should have said I got more lines in it, and then I'd be on six or. Jeb is currently winning the limerick off yes. six five. So if anybody wants to send in and present a red limerick, be greatly appreciated. <laughs> Very competitive math. Okay. So, right, so we've wrapped yeah, all that. I've, up wrapped, I've got an even number of wraps along the top. Everything's in place. So what I'm going to do is to keep it because at the moment it can still wobble in in between. I don't really want that. So what I'm going to do is take the tails and thread both of them. Draw them over the back of the of the blank. Thread them through the hole that we made at the bottom. Okay, and turn it over like so. And then we're going to do the same. So one of the tails we're going to wrap round that way. Seven wraps, and the other one the other way. So let's quickly do that now. Just have to remember to keep pulling it into position and making sure that the wraps are opposite, directly opposite on the circle. Okay, so I just carry on with that. Have you got some bell making pliers there, Ed? I have, Gemma, <laughs> yes. It's funny you should mention those bell making pliers that I'm looking at right now. <laughs> your opportunity to add your bell making pliers to your order coming up right now. I'll tell you what, this is a great show for anybody who uh, loves their tools because. So Got many some good tools in the show. Yeah. I mean, yeah, nice hammer. Nice hammer. And now bow making pliers. Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> These are the, uh, I think it's six and 8.5. Yes, I'm correct. Six mil and 8.5 bow making pliers. Great thing about this, you can make your own jump rings. Which is exactly what we're going to do in a minute. Oh, that's what we're actually going to do yeah. with them. They're available right now for 6.95. Um, I think we, we did make these available the other day, but of course people might not have been watching on Friday. You might have been at work, you might have had other commitments. Right now, if you've got your order up and running, maybe you grabbed your copper sheets or, I mean, the kits have been extremely popular today. Maybe you just grabbed your hammer, your steel block, and you've got that order up and running. 2 95 completely unaffected how many items you add to it. Your bail making pliers, 6 95 There they are. Okay, so Thanks, we've got this one completed now, so it's all stitched in, and that's one component. Now, that's, to be honest, that would be a nice pendant just on its own. You could use it like that. That'd be gorgeous. But I've made a chain of them, so I'll just show you how to pop it into the chain. Okay. You can see here that Gem has created little mm. jump ring connectors. Right. I'm actually going to... The only reason I'm going to make the jump oh, yeah. rings it's is because I haven't, got, I haven't got an accessory pack. A, a findings pack, so I'm going to have to make some jump rings. Now I'm going to use one mil wire um, from the kit before. Is that all right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, unless we can find we some jump rings. No, well, we have brought it individually, haven't we? As yeah. well as part of that bundle. Yeah, that's it. So, so people will have grabbed that. But I mean, any time you get a chance to do this. But even if you've got, you've got um, jump rings in your findings yeah. packs left over, then they're great. It's just I haven't got any to hand, so I'm going to make yeah. some, which is brilliant. You know, it's good to know how to do that anyway, you've isn't got it? Your, oh, yeah, you've got your normal bio I, I can use mine or I can use Do you those. want to use these if you want to? Yeah. Can we show you? Just because these are on screen at the moment, six ninety-five. And the great thing about these is that you've got a longer length, you've got more consistency, you can create you a can larger make coil. More. Yeah. yeah, you can make more at once with these. Okay, so to make jump rings, a bit like we did with the gizmo um, earlier, I'm just going to make a coil onto here. So grip of the wire into um, the jaws of the pliers and turn my wrist and release the grip and turn my wrist. So what you do is you turn your wrist as far as you can go, then you release the grip. You don't take the pliers out, you rotate the pliers back round to the point where the wire is straight and turn your wrist, release, turn your wrist and then you just keep going like that. Okay. She makes everything look easy. But I suppose you do develop a sort of yes, easy way of doing things when you're yeah, more experienced. Yeah, that's it, and it's my full-time job, so I'm doing it all the time. So, you know, if, if I was doing this as a part-time hobby, it might take sort of six years to get to do things, you know, find the easy ways, but when you're doing it full-time, it just yeah. takes And takes of course, so long. You know, once you, you know, the less time you have to invest in design, the greater the margins you're working on when you're selling your commissions, yeah. of course. Yeah, of course. 
Time is money. You find that the design, the design process takes far longer than the actual making. Right. So, you know, once you've made a piece, it's, it takes half of its time, much time to make it again, as it did the first time, you know? Okay. Okay, so to cut the jump rings again, I want a nice flush finish, so I'm going to rotate my pliers and keep doing that. So if I go in this way, the flat edge is butt up to the flat edge on the last one, I've made a jump ring, and then trim off. Remember to keep, to just trim off that little pointy end that you have. Okay, so we we'll just cut, I'm going to cut three to show you how I link to them. If you've got the saw, the jump ring saw, yeah, and, yeah, and the jump ring pliers, brilliant. Another time saver. Yeah. Okay, so I've just made a few to start us off. And then what, what I've done, because obviously, you know, it's not easy to link these and you don't want a bulky link in between. So I've dropped my flyer somewhere. Oh, I've just got, got them, them for you, sorry. That's all right, I got them. Okay, so open your jump rings just like you're opening a door, so you bend it upwards like so. And I pop two on this side. Close them. I did some chain mail on air the other day. Did Jim. you? How did it go? It went great. Did it? Yeah. What did you make? I just did a little length just to prove that I could do it because Lorraine, one of our uh, regular viewers, mm. is encouraging me to have a go at everything because she thinks it will help new newbies, newbies to yeah. well, it is. be inspired. And, it's it, good. and to be fair, it has been working all week, so Lorraine yeah. is quite right. But yeah, they said... Come on, let's see some of your chain now. So, I did so. So you indulged? Yes. Good. To be fair, you can't really go wrong with chain mail. Well, That's what I love about it. Yeah, I remember when I first started doing chain mail, my, my elbows would be like up in my uh, yeah, actually, up I in my do ears. Remember the first piece I did, yeah. yeah. Now I'm like a bit of a, I feel like a, bit a little a bit of a whiz kid, yeah. <laughs> but somebody did text in to say, I haven't seen that. Uh, week before and I'm going to use it. You've inspired me. So oh, that's what the show's nice. all about, right? Yeah, it is. Cool. It is. Definitely. Right, okay, so I've got two links on either side and I'm going to bring one link up because we've got our wire wrapping there. We've got sort of a, a gap where we can't get our jump rings in. But it's actually quite nice to make a feature of that. So now I'm going to link those jump rings from either side with another jump ring and close it up. And there you've got a nice um, connector now to connect that into. I mean, you can make that into a pendant now if you wanted. Yeah. Or you can add it into a chain as I have. Beautiful. Here. And the same with the other one. I need another jump ring. Okay, so just add that one. And I'm ready to link either side now. So then it's a case of making some chain links. Um, I've used the little star head pins just to add another feature. It's yeah. like luck and stars. Yeah. It all yeah, sort it all of ties in, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And I don't know about um, people at home, but I always, when I get the nice head pins, I save Set, them for certain them projects because you think, well, you want the floral ones for absolutely. you know a nice vintage design. You want the stars for something more modern. So the, I uh, stash those always. The cufflinks that I wore yesterday um, were made by Tech Up Sam when oh I left yeah. the late show and she made me six pairs of cufflinks and they all had the little heart head pins. Used them. There you go. So that's, uh, that's basically the, the intricacy yep. of the design and the rest of it yep. is just layering up the rest of it beading just, really yeah, but jump rings and the gemstones are doing a lot of the work aren't yeah. they? Yeah they are. They are. Absolutely gorgeous designs and we've got a message okay. that's come through. Who's it come through from? The lovely Claire. Uh, a JM presenter called Ed often reportedly said designers were cool, but he was no fool. He had great designs in his head. Claire's on fire. Six all. I like it. Okay, well, thank you, Claire. We're going to go to a quick break. You can continue to add the bail making pliers to your order for just six ninety five. I think there's a few of the kits remaining in stock as well at twenty four ninety five. So that should have been well over thirty eight pounds, and you got that two mil wire. Gemma's favourite. Yes. Definitely. Why not grab that very nice hammer as well? Why well, nice you pie. definitely need to grab the hammer. The hammer, the block, and the. Uh, the oh, I'm so sorry. Just not one of your designs, eh? There we go. If 
probably got one arm, you see, and can't use my right arm. It doesn't really want to sit on that, does no, it? No, it doesn't. Okay, it doesn't. that wasn't my fault. It wants to sit on a wrist, really. It does. Okay, most bracelets do. Mine. Yeah, on your yeah, wrist. It might sit on my wrist. She's still in her own jewellery. Okay, we're going to go into a quick break. When we return, we will be entering into the final hour of the show. And you know what that means. We're going to have some cracking prices for you. Add it to your order deals coming up in two. Join guest designer Gemma Crow to create incredible jewellery designs with Wire Mesh. Explore this exciting medium and learn a selection of incredible techniques